앞에 이거! 아. 벤지에 한타려 그렇죠. 엄청난 파괴를 못했습니다. 벤지! 아프리카 박스! 각성 아프리카! 그렇죠. 먼저 박살! 신경! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the LCK Playoffs 2020 Round 1 for Summer. I'm Atlas. I'm joined by the Valdanalyst. And we have a unexpected best of five for you here today. If you weren't watching the wildcard match a couple of days ago, T1 fell to the hands of the gatekeepers, Afrika Freaks. Afrika, who were never able to take down a team above them during the regular season, do it at the first time of asking, and now have found themselves in playoff round one in this first best of five up against Gen G. Valdez, what did you make of uh, our last finals match to get us to this point? I just, uh, I just don't really know how that was even possible. I don't think a single person could have logically expected the outcome that we saw a couple of days ago. And I know that, uh, you know, everybody here at LCK, everybody said T1 was going to win. And so now we have this really big surprise, right, with Afrika actually making it through, which is really interesting. I just wonder how interesting is this match going to get, right? If T1, they fall down to Afrika after defeating them all year, or at least all split, um, but Afrika make it through, you know, maybe this next match would have just been a 3-0 Genji over T1, and maybe it's going to be a 3-0 over Afrika as well, because I know a lot of us have been talking about how strong Genji have been looking in recent times. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's very surprising to see uh, the playoffs run that we've had so far, and we've only had one match. It's absolutely insane. Having a look at the champion points, though, ladies and gentlemen, Darm1 will get a minimum of uh, 120 points if they uh, manage to come second. Of course, they are waiting in the final, so second is the lowest they can get here for summer. So 120 points is what everybody else is trying to eclipse to make sure that they can auto-qualify for Worlds. Genji can do that relatively simply by continuing to win, and DRX similarly in that boat, as if they're able to finish ahead of Gen G and they should be okay. And that means winning in the next match, assuming Gen G is going to make it up there. So certainly a lot of interesting stuff. Of course, ties when it comes to those championship points are broken by the team that has had the most points in summer. Yeah, and it's really interesting. You know, you were talking about, uh, well, actually, we do have this points of the match first that I think we're going to be getting into. This is really well produced. Yeah, we took super a look cool. at this earlier, so, uh, you know, we want to talk about it, but at the same time, we're like, wow, just just watch it. You know, <laughs> I know. At the same time, it's really cool. But uh, there are certainly some interesting points of this match. Not as many funny things to talk about. Definitely a whole lot of super pog moments, though, as uh, Genji have been doing a lot better than Afrika during the regular season. I don't think there's any surprises there. As uh, the record, as it stands, is 4-0. and zero. Genji come into this series 100% the favorites. And it's behind this guy. Uh, for Afrika, it's behind Fly. But BDD, I mean, back-to-back -back, uh, regular season MVP or player of the game. Just really unbelievable performance so far for BDD in that mid lane. <laughs> Look at that. Someone get the camera with the stats popping up right as the wall makes it through. That was my favorite part of this whole video, actually. But, uh, <laughs> these guys have gone ahead against each other, beating the imply in mid lane 22 times, and they've broken it exactly down the middle, 11 and 11. That's pretty interesting. That will be broken today. We will have a new champion amongst the two, 
at least, and a huge matchup in the top lane at the same time. Rascal has been looking so consistent as of recent, and Keen, you know, he's a little bit up and down, but I feel like he's really powering up towards the playoffs here, Atlas. He had an absolutely phenomenal final. I mean, well, not final, first playoffs match, right? Like, he looked so, so good up against Kana. And uh, I think that Rascal might have his work cut out for him because Kane is a veteran. You know, this guy understands the high pressure moments and now Afrika has momentum. So I think that's going to be a very interesting matchup as you can see the flash to get the Fates call in his jungler as he was playing that top lane Callista that worked out so, so well. But here on the bottom side of the map, our two Ash gods in Ruler and Mystic, uh, the kiting out of Ruler. This is from a match quite early on, but his Ash is just super, super good. His Callista as well. But I mean, these are two of the picks that Mystic has certainly made a name for himself on as well. So a lot to think about when it comes to this matchup between these two very storied 80 carries. Yeah, and 29 dual kills was pretty insane as well. Don't forget about Light. Absolutely doing a fantastic job supporting Ruler so far in this split. And take a look at Mystic had some big pop-off moments in this split and even in the wildcard match as we're going to take a look at Gen G's best of five results. So, oh my god. Um, in the playoffs, they have exactly zero victories. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. Since 2016. Then, Are you kidding? And then kidding? they always win the regional <laughs> qualifier for like every time. How does this happen? That was the QV buff. Time. That was what happened. It was the QV sure. buff for the for the regional qualifier. That's how Genji made it to Worlds so, so many times. Of course, winning in 2017 as well. And that was off the back of that uh, big tank player on the top side of the map. Now it's going to be Rascal, who plays in a similar way. So uh, I'm interested to see whether Rascal can do it a little bit earlier uh, than QV was able to uh, by bringing the team to, uh, to the World Championship without having to go through that regional uh, qualifier. As let's have a look at some of the team stats throughout the regular season and of course for Afrika in the wildcard game. I think they're going to be the stats that are most interesting as uh, these are the most recent ones for Afrika and they've definitely been focusing on that Herald, although Gen G were very good at that as well. Yeah, first in the entire league. That's ahead of Dom1, that's ahead of DRX, T1, every other team. And uh, definitely some good numbers in terms of just the objective control. And Gen G, I mean, it's it's crazy. They've always been known to be so consistent, especially this year. I feel like everybody on their team is just so poised in pretty much every single role. And at the same time, they struggle so much in playoffs. We'll see if they can turn that around here as we're taking a look at the predictions as we got our... Uh, couple of English commentators there in the middle. Wadid says you can't stop ruler in life. LS saying rock is better than scissors. And which is quite interesting. I mean that's also correct if you guys have ever played rock, paper, scissors. Thankfully LS has done his True. research, knows exactly how that game is played, and rock wow. does indeed beat <laughs> scissors. So uh That's a great point. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll see whether you know DRX are going to be paper making meeting the next team in the playoffs or whether they're not, and whether they're also going to bring rock, because of course you can have ties in that game as well. I know my rock, paper, scissors, don't you worry, but I'm wow. looking forward to you seeing You guys that. have done your, your research. Yeah, I know. Man. I don't know if I could say the same. We might have a booklet prepared <laughs> by the start of game two, so you guys okay, can come and good. check in on exactly what the rule set is for rock, paper, scissors. But it has something to do with rocks, papers, and scissors, so I guess you could start there. Let's have a look at the starting lineups as Rascal is going to be towards the top side. Clid in the jungle. BDD, our player of the game for the entire year in the mid lane and Ruler and Life are going to be rounding out the roster. Ruler and Life have looked like the best bottom lane in the LCK recently, and we'll see whether they continue to do so here in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, I think absolutely uh, right now as a duo, definitely look probably the best. I mean, you you consider them maybe against like a, a Ghost and Barrel, but I feel like Barrel carries a lot of that weight, whereas Ghost is kind of just like holding down the fort, yep. you know? But the two of them together getting the most duo kills in summer is also quite impressive. And take a look at the lineup here for Afrika. Dread is going to be starting again, and the rest of them coming out as you would expect. So looking to get aggressive right from the get-go. Yeah, exactly. And of course, uh, Dread came in at the f in the first game for Afrika last time, and he was able to pick up a victory. And so, let's see whether they can do it again. As Rascal up there towards the top side, he has played two games of the Malphite. We saw that actually in the LPL final just recently. In fact, last night, 
uh, for us here in Korea. It might have been the morning mm -hmm. for you elsewhere on the planet. But uh, the Malphite is certainly something that we should be keeping our eyes on as Kane did find the Callista pick once again and flexed that top lane, and the rest was history in that T1 matchup. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be the key player matchup for sure. Uh, you take a look at Rascal. Apparently, maybe it wasn't updated yesterday, but he is second in the LCK. He's got 25 solo kills. So he's definitely that rock in the top side, but he's also getting in the face of his opponents and taking down so many of them. So here's the updated stats uh, overall as Rascal will slide in actually right ahead of his former top laner yep. uh, of Samsung and, of course, Gen.G, Cube. Yep, Kanna, of course, made it to 28, but was unable to topple Marin's 31 solo kill record. I believe it was 36 if you included solo kills in the playoffs that year. And that was, of course, 2015 summer. That was the year they went plus 29, much like Darmon did this year. That was a basically unstoppable uh, SKT. Uh, after, of course, the uh, Korean Exodus uh, heading over to the LPL for a lot of those players. Yeah. Of course, that is history. This is today. And this is going to be the bottom lane matchup. Ruler versus Mystic. You can see definitely some shared champions for both of them. Uh, the Callista worth looking out for for Ruler, but also for Mystic. It's not actually there, but uh, Mystic has played a lot of games of Callista. And we've seen her banned against Afrika Freaks in the majority of their matches as well. So definitely keep your eye out there. As the 11 and 2 Ash records, pretty impressive for good old Ruler. It is, and it's going to be interesting to see if either of them get uh, that today. And just taking a look at these stats and the way that the end of summer has been going, I think you kind of currently have to give the crown of best AD carry in the LCK over to Ruler. I mean, the guy has just been insanely consistent, carries his team even when, you know, the other lanes fail, and hasn't really had many bad games. I mean, this guy, it's hard to get first in pretty much every single stat along the way. Yeah. As you can see, they're, uh, they're nice little set up here, getting ready for the games. Here's Gen G. Uh, Ruler has also done the most damage in the LCK. His damage per minute is the highest in the entire league, <laughs> yeah. um, which is just nuts because Darmon's in the, the league way, yeah. and, and he's not on the team. It's it's just absolutely insane. Yeah. As we uh, head over to the Freak Up Studio, here's Gen G. Uh, sorry, here's a Freak of Freaks. Once again, back at it, I believe. Unless they are somewhere else this time. That's where they were last time, and I'm pretty sure that this was yeah. a similar camera angle. Looks looks the same. So I would assume that's there. Oh, we're back to Gen G. Okay, <laughs> they've got some pretty cool computers. By are the they way. computers or are they spaceships? It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, maybe Genji is going to start the next space enterprise, but maybe. Uh, maybe this is their foreshadowing or some hints they're trying to give us because those are some pretty sick lighting setups as well uh, alongside in that room. As you can see, if we could have more of the studio feel. Exactly. Well, let's do it. Let's get into abandoned pick for game number one. Genji did have side selection. They chose blue side. Absolutely no surprise to anyone. And uh, they will be banning first. Afrika will have to wait on the red side until game two, where they will have the choice. Likely they will choose blue side, but we saw a top esports. They chose red side and they won in that best of five. So we'll see whether it is going to be similar for Afrika. Is Caitlyn going to be that first ban here by Genji? Yeah, Caitlyn goes down. Set also goes down here on the side of Afrika. And we, we saw two key matchups. But, uh, you know, we saw the top lane, we saw the AD carry roll. But there are a couple of, you know, big picks for some of the other players, right? Like uh, BD Zazir, obviously, right? As I say that, they yep. do ban it. Uh, that is definitely something that I think Afrika are going to want to keep tabs on. There's a reason why when we were introducing BDD, there were about five Azir highlights in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, not much else. He's really good at Zoe, too but uh, Azir definitely his his big champion. I think uh, Zoe is going to be really important in this series because Fly had probably one of his best performances in game three against T1, and it was on that Zoe. So it might be something to look out for. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, the TF does get taken away as does Senna. So they're not gonna let Ruler take that pick. And Rascal is a huge Renekton player at the same time. And the Renekton priority has gone through the roof. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know if they would consider first picking it here. They absolutely would. 
Rascal, yeah, I think you're right. They would definitely consider it. <laughs> that is for sure. Are they going to do it? Looks like maybe they're just going to pick up Bola Bear for Clid. I think that's a solid choice as well, especially with Set Band, which is a very common response to the Bola Bear. Yeah, absolutely. I don't mind it. Uh, the Lightning Bear coming in, keeping your cards a little bit close to your chest by taking that one. A Freaker can go towards the Crocodile if they would like to, but with Lucian available, Jace available, there are a lot of options into it. So you can understand why Gen G straight away and why a Freaker might choose to go somewhere else instead. Ash is up and uh, there's no Caitlyn or Senna to contend with. So it might be a good option as uh, we are going full LPL here today as Dread is going to pick <laughs> up the Graves. Yeah. Certainly uh, not exactly the most winningest champion here in the LCK, but if you look over Six in China, three. it works very, very well. So obviously we've done something wrong. We haven't figured it out. And Dread is going to start this game by sinning uh, on that Graves. Let's see what he picks away for the rest of his team. Yeah, Graves slowly but surely coming back into the meta. This does happen many times in the playoffs. And there's the Ash you were talking about. We mentioned how this is going to be very high priority for both of these uh, 80 carries and uh, even with Kalissa available you're not really 100% sure that you want to pick it up here straight into the ash because of the laning phase and especially with the Nautilus band at the same time which might have been targeted at that duo in the bottom side but with Renekton available that seems like a pretty obvious choice what else are they going to pick alongside it? Not entirely sure. Of course, Renekton Volibear isn't necessarily as uh, explosive as the Renekton Nidalee that we see so often. It can still work out. Of course, you can just layer a lot more CC this time. You just don't quite have as much damage as this is a pick that was super important in the wildcard match. And the Akali is going to be locked in for BDD. I mean, this is like cards are face up on the table here for Gen.G. <laughs> they are just holding onto their bottom lane and uh, they're just going with comfort this time. They're not even worrying about what a Freaker are picking. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, this is, again, another, you know, it was a big pick in the wild card, but it's also a huge pick for BDD. And so he's going to pick that one up after his Zir gets banned. No showing of the Zoe just yet, just totally ignored. So Fly maybe deciding he wants to go for something else. I also wouldn't be surprised if Genji used one of their second bans on that pick as Keen is going to pick up his Mordekaiser. Definitely a big fan of that champion. And now with no 80 carry or support pick for Gen.G, I think Afrika have their pick of the 80 carry litter that they would love to ban away from Ruler. Yeah, Ruler's going to not have too many things that he can play. Of course, he does have a very extensive champion pool, but not having Ezreal is going to be a big deal. And we'll see what their next ban is going to be. You'd expect that Afrika are pretty happy with the Callista matchup, so they may not actually ban that one away at all. Yeah. And uh, Keen might even pick it, because, you know, he's playing top lane. Uh, Fly could play mid lane <laughs> yeah. Mordekaiser, like, who knows what's sure. going to happen. The Fly can play anything, man. He's going to pick up the team one of these days. Absolutely. There is the Callista, though. They are actually going okay. to say, you know, he's actually, you know, he's still too good on that pick, even though he could probably, uh, you know, handle it in the lane. A lot of people seem to think that the, the Callista is actually fine into the Ash. I feel like she struggles in that lane quite a lot, but maybe I've got a slightly different read. Than these players and of course Maybe rulers callista needs to be respected and with the extra power it gives life makes it a little bit dangerous as there's the tom kench ban away from ben also karma taken away the ash karma duo pretty powerful mm -hmm. i'm expecting a support pick here valdez yeah you would assume that there were some supports that were taken away the tom kench the nautilus taken away here and with jace being hovered this which is, is very interesting. interesting i mean you don't have to show this just yet, but uh, I guess because they already know what's going mid and top, they're like, well, actually, you know, let's just save support counter pick because we can't counter, uh, you know, we already have the counter essentially in the top side, whereas we don't know what their support or their bottom lane is even going to be. So they're like, hey, let's just, you know, let's save counter pick for this. And I, for one, am very curious to see what they're going to go for. Are they just going to pick up Jin, which is very popular nowadays? Nope. No, Ruler's going back to Kai'Sa. Wow. Zero and six. It's definitely not uh, the greatest pick here in the LCK at the moment. F felt like a trap. There were, it was like a week there when we saw a lot of Kaisa picks and she did absolutely nothing and we weren't exactly sure why she was being picked. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's see what Ruler does have planned for this one. Life. Make us a believer. Yeah. That's the real question. Well, let's see what li life has for us as well. As this was yeah. this was a popular bottom lane, the, the Kaisa Gragas. 
Uh, certainly a lot of follow-up when it comes to landing casks and body slams and things like that. And uh, Life's Gragas is fantastic. So looking forward to seeing what he can show us. I'm looking forward to also seeing where Jason Mordekaiser are going, because currently they can go in top or mid, and I don't know whether I like them in either. As you could expect, you know, Jason <laughs> to Renekton, that's a good matchup. Uh, but I don't know whether I like Mordekaiser into Akali that much. I guess the Death Realm does help pin her down. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with you in terms of the matchups. I just think that Keen is such a, a, a huge fan of the Mordekaiser that I would assume he would hop onto it. But as I'm saying that, they actually do swap it around once again. So maybe Fly has been practicing that, trying to give a bit of flex potential to his team and making it not just a Keen pick. And down to the wire, looks like it is actually going to be Fly on the Mordekaiser into the mid lane. And they're going to have those two very strong laners Renekton versus Jace up in the top. This reminds me of the good old days where you'd play Mordekaiser in the mid lane. It was beautiful times. You'd build a force of nature and you'd just be, uh, <laughs> you'd just be the What's best. That, I know, exactly. <laughs> it's like you're explaining to kids what a cassette tape is or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A force of nature. Yeah. What's an Atari? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I digress. Uh, Mordekaiser in the mid lane this time is just to try and go up against Beated Ease Akali and survive. You also do have some kill threat if you can get her out of position and then put her in a death realm and stop her from being able to jump around everywhere. Of course, Mordekaiser definitely having a lot of staying power with the, uh, the amount of healing that he does have in his kit with his W, also the shielding, if anything does go wrong. So I'm very interested to see what uh, Afrika can make with this sort of double top laner composition, but let's get into it. Genji starting off on blue. They'll make their way out life with Hillbilly Gragas. A shout out to score here in the finals. <laughs> By the way, you've been calling every stage the finals. I know it, I know it feels that way. I know, but, I know. It's uh, like, <laughs> I say finals instead of playoffs, and I always have for every single tournament ever. You're just really excited. I think, I, think. I don't know. Just my, like, maybe my parents were just amazing. terrible at understanding tournament format. Uh, because I just, I just think that it means the same thing as playoffs. Uh, well, I mean, it's the final part of the tournament. It's the final, you know, tournament of the year. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not entirely well, sure. Not not technically, but... Uh, Do you know what? They're, they're going to have to take me off the broadcast for the next one, and so that then I can just come on and do the finals, so I can actually just yeah. say finals. Yeah. So you can call it the finals? Yeah. <laughs> call the real thing the finals? You only have I to like deal that. with it for, for the next, you know, couple of hours or something like that, Valdez. I think we'll be fine. Uh-huh. As our ruler well, hasn't chosen a skin. Hours. What's going on? <laughs> Kais has got some really cool skins, and ruler's just gone full faker on it. Yeah, maybe he's like, well, this is a tribute to, to Faker. I will not wear a skin for this match and this match alone. This rascal. Yeah, this he's is interesting. taking most of his health by, but BDD is going to come in. There's the five point strike. Dread actually trying to get some damage down here. Quick draw. Life comes in. He shouldn't find a body slam and does get it. But in the meantime, Keen is just going to be taken down. First blood goes over to BDD. Start the yakety sacks, Valdez. This is a very weird game already. As Rascal, he does have flash, but I think he's taken Culver Meek. As now Dread is behind enemy lines, but not in the cool way and rascal picks up a second kill for it genji <laughs> on the renekton oh i love that ruler at the same time he throws up sad zoe and then laughs at them he's like all right guys uh welcome to the finals as atlas would say it oh um, god it's i don't know what they were thinking just they didn't have anyone up there in the top side and you can see the damage dealt most of that graves damage was directly into the renekton who was healing a bunch back with his q and this is going to make the lane a little bit harder for Rascal. As you can see, Keen was able to get up here first, which means that he built a level two first. And Jace is very oppressive in those lanes. So Renekton not able to get the greatest start, but I mean, two kills. They're still going to be really happy with that, of course. Oh, absolutely. So as long as Rascal can be just, you know, calm and farm it out under his turret, I think Gen G already have a massive lead in this one. They do, it's to the tune of about 700 gold. As I'm just gonna defend myself a little bit while life is unable to, has to body slam himself to safety. But you know, like, it's called semi-finals and quarter-finals. This is technically quarter-finals. Therefore, it's the still wow. finals. <laughs> you know? Uh, so, yeah. 
I'd say look, there was there was a there, there was a friend of mine in chat and he 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 stood up for me, so I was I was okay. very happy about that. That's that's a great point, Alex. I've never thought of that before. Yeah, see, there we go. Finals, there it is. It's all part of the finals, mm -hmm. and uh, the quarterfinals is just one eighth of the importance of the finals. Or not exactly, they're one all fourth, they're right? all just <laughs> fractions of finals. Okay. Wow, we we said we wouldn't do math on stream before, and uh, I just called the quarter and eighth, so. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Ooh, yikes! Into this game. That's all right. Uh, BD's gonna be having fun. Notice that Dread, after all this, actually was able to get into the enemy jungle and steal away the Raptor. That was there cute. Has been a lot of trading. Yeah, BD backflips out of the way of the Obliterate quite nicely. As Dread's just gonna ignore everything that's happening and just wander over towards his uh chicken camp is now keen's in trouble oh dear sky strike comes down and that is a very dead jace yeah the, the thing about this duo is they're eventually gonna both be really nice and tanky uh but even in the early game they do have some really great gank potential just because of the double stun which is pretty long uh, not quite the damage output i guess but if you can land the storm strike it is definitely not so Ooh. bad some more trading down here at the bottom lane yeah why Tanking it up quite nicely, though, and he does have some sustain as he just drinks himself into uh, a better health bar situation. Looks like Rule is coping pretty well, though. As he throws down a Q, lands it on the Mystic, who will get to level 4 and uh, increase his health bar just a little bit also. But very, very even, and that's basically all Genji needs to do as life moves on over. And Ben's not going to have much in order to answer this Frel Yordian bottom lane. Definitely wanting to wait until maybe mid to, you know, later stages of the game. You know, Braum not exactly fantastic in the laning phase. But we'll see what Ben can actually get done. Yeah. And just taking a look at this composition from Genji, it really shows the evolution of the LCK from only scaling compositions and sitting back and waiting and not doing anything. Um, especially for a team like Gen.G, as long as Samsung is. Oh, yep. that thought. There's a flash in. Mystic getting taken down low, but the same can be said for Life, who is going to have his namesake removed. Now, Ruler trying to escape from Dread as end of the line. Isn't exactly that for the AD carry, but the support will go down for Afrika's first kill of this quarterfinal. Yeah, so Dread gets killed as essentially first blood, it was second blood, and he has a very late start to his jungle and all that. Comes down and makes a real difference down on the bottom side. They actually bait them into going for that kill. You could see Mystic just standing out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, They're gonna go for this dear. kill as well. Yeah, Ruler no summoners either, as Ben is gonna stand beside Dread as Ruler actually going to escape here as Clid runs down, and there are so many options! Oh, oh my god, Stormstrike will take down the Graves. Ruler will survive as well, double kill for Clid as now Fly and BDD are fighting, but it looks like BDD is just bullying Fly. We'll get the flash out in the 1v1. Flashes forward, gets the kill, and he's gonna trade in the end. <laughs> and uh, and got another fight up here on the top side. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll play by play that one as well. You could have felt free to pick that one up, Valdez, because of I course, did, yeah. when, when things are this insane, it's just lucky that we've got a couple of play by plays, but it's just some dirty True. farming here by Rascal. No real action. So, so much stuff happened. I mean, they're, these guys must have been watching LPL yesterday. Oh, like, yeah. this is just insanity. Like, Afrika just going crazy down on the bottom side, thinking that, oh, yeah, three on one dive should be easy. But then, of course, Graves showing that. But look at this bait. They're like, oh, yeah. The W actually misses from Ruler. And I think that would have probably killed Mystic, or at least he would have stayed, tried to get that last hit, and then go for it, but what happens is Ruler gets sent alone, and then you're like, oh, they're probably going to kill him. Well, nope, it's Graves. You just kite around the turret, and take a look at this. We got Volibear coming in, we got the TP, which gets, by the way, interrupted by Mordekaiser putting the Akali into the Death Realm, but it doesn't matter, because... Yeah, she, she also get, put oh, him okay. into the Death Realm. Yeah, we're <laughs> fighting on the bottom side again. This is going to be another gank from Clear and a double kill for Ruler. I think this is how the Kais is supposed to work. You're supposed to start the game like three, two and zero, and then you're going to be fine. Yeah, it uh, certainly helps. Yeah. Uh, so oh. There's more trading up in the top side, Atlas. Yeah, is it trading or is it just a crocodile trying to eat a person? And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we all know how that one goes. Um, crocodile versus... 
human, not necessarily one that a human's going to win all that well, especially with proximity to a river like this. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're taking a look at some of Rascal's stats as it says he is like a top, um, top lane soloer. And uh, yeah, just he's got so many consistent numbers. You see the lane kills, solo kills at 15. He's got the most, even more than Kana. So getting a lot of them in the laning phase. B2B uh, might yeah. just kill Fly here. He does have the second ultimate. Death Drum comes down though as Fly. Ooh. Oh, he will die. And Tribute is going to uh, allow B2D to stay alive. Oh man, he's just, wow. he's styling. He's styling today. BDD looking for a uh, playoffs player of the game as well as the regular season for two seasons in a row. Now Dread comes in, gonna be able to take down this control ward. Life and Ruler, they do not want to give that one up, but avoids the barrel. Oh no, oh my God. That's a, that's <laughs> a lot of damage. Yeah. This I is mean, that serrated dirt build that we see. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty insane damage coming out of the Kaiser right now. She's 2-0 and zero at, uh, well, she was 2-0 and zero at like 7 minutes. Yeah. That was 9 and a half minutes. Dread is like, well, I'm trying my very best to get something done given the lane state. And it does look like, by the way, that Fly and Keen have switched lanes. They've swapped, so... I mean, they may as well. They're both top laners, technically, is, uh... BDD uh, seems to have gone home. As has everybody. We took a, um, uh, that's yes. That's a little bit awkward. Um. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess when they're, you know, playing on their own internet or, you know, their own connection, maybe some um, issues can arise. Yes, uh, I believe they're in an esports studio right now. Well, Afrika are. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, but it was Gen G that are in their team house. So, okay, that's that's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. I was so a little bit worried. Like I'm like, that, if, uh, if, if Genji were also disconnecting, it's like, oh, that's, uh, if they were at home, then maybe that'd be okay. But Genji, unfortunately, uh, struggling just a little bit to uh, keep themselves connected to the video game. Uh, otherwise, uh, pretty good at destroying Afrika thus far. This is not a very even game. No. And uh, it has been stompage from before minute one. <laughs> stompage. I love that. Stompage is real. Mm -hmm. And apparently now there's even more stompage to the internet of Genji. Yeah, maybe maybe so, like Genji uh, were winning so hard that their internet exploded or they something broke the like game that. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not entirely sure. I think they'll be uh they'll probably be back pretty quickly. Um not, and... it might have might have been like it, it seemed like it was B to D who uh sort of fell out first, so I'm hoping that it's not like the building's internet yeah. exploded or something like that. I saw like two or three disconnects, so hopefully it's nothing too bad. Yeah. And that's a little bit awkward, right? You lose time in the lane. I would imagine maybe they're going to go for some kind of a chrono break after the disconnection. Uh, uh, potentially. But, you know, I don't know whether we'll have to, because sure. there hasn't really been too much action. Well, <laughs> apparently all of them were disconnected, and um, well, taking a look at it now, it looks like they're in the game with the paused screen. Yeah, so I think they might have been able to reconnect. Um, just so you guys know, uh, it, there's currently a bit of a typhoon hitting uh, Seoul. Oh, that's true. That's uh, that's starting to happen. <laughs> so that might have something to do with internet problem. not necessarily being the most reliable. But I'm not sure. Genji's building is really, really big, so you'd expect that the internet <laughs> yeah. should be absolutely fine. I mean, they're an esports team, right? There's, they've got to have literally the the best internet yeah. that Korea has to offer. Same for Afrika. Yeah. You would imagine here, especially in an esports studio. Yep. And here, of course, over there, the the Freak Up Studio. But I'd expect that uh, the Genji will be absolutely happy. fine pretty soon. It is, yeah. It's at this point where you're like, "Oh, come on, guys, sort your stuff out." We've uh, we're just waiting. Says Afrika with their with their own esports studio that they have access so, to. Yeah, both Dread and Mystic had their head in their hands, but probably just resting their eyes. I mean, that's something you can do, um, especially if you're really focused and you ha you haven't uh, blinked in a while. You yeah. just put your warm hands over your eyes and just you know. 
So don't think like they're crying or anything <laughs> like that, guys. <laughs> no, we, just we haven't quite gotten there. Maybe if it's a 3-0 with all three games like this one, then perhaps. But Ooh. Uh, just just resting. It looks like the headsets are coming back on. So yeah, you can see life just behind Ruler there is sort of disguised by Ruler for a moment. I was wondering whether he'd taken some time off, but not. He is still in that chair. Headsets are back on. I believe we should be getting back into this one pretty dang quickly. Yeah. I was trying to see what the uh, the referee was pressing. It looks like Alt F5 or <laughs> Alt F4 or something. I'm like, I don't know. That doesn't seem uh, good. Yeah. Although, I mean, they're all in the game and it's just sitting at paused. So. Yep. Spirit Not woke up, though. Sure. Maybe it's time to go. As Fly also dreading. looks very <laughs> relaxed. Look at her, like, uh, Fly often, whenever he's, like, on camera or whenever there's a pause or before the game, he looks like he's about to go to sleep. Most yeah, of the time. he's a really relaxed dude, you know? Yeah, it's just he's chill. very chill. He's even, he's got the same demeanor in interviews and stuff like that, you know? He's just very, uh, he's not scared to... Um, you know, he doesn't hold back, basically. He's going to say what he wants to say. Yep. And he's just enjoying his time. You know, he's just hanging out. And so are we. We're both hanging out at our own houses. We are, indeed. Uh, unfortunately, coronavirus has been getting more severe here, so we had to go back to our houses. But um, we got the jackets with the with the badges. So <laughs> yep. That's good. We, we came prepared. Sorry, it's on this side. Yes, can confirm. I do have... The badge, it seems to be like hiding behind my microphone most of the time. So I need to remind people that I did in fact get the badge. Mm -hmm. And I think you, I can't actually see you, but I believe we're wearing the same jacket. We are, we're, <laughs> we're both with the, the black and blue combo. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's sort of a bit of a, that's a bit of an accident. It's like we turned up to high school wearing the same outfit. Like, it's just the chemistry, you know, you and I. Like, yeah, maybe that's what it is. You know, I, I feel like over the split. There are two different right. friendships, you know. There are friendships where if you turn up to school and you're wearing the same clothes, you get really embarrassed or annoyed. And then there's the friendships where you turn up wearing the same clothes and you're like, I'm psyched about this. This is awesome. Yeah, that's really hype, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's the two different uh, ones. So and I'm glad that we're the second one, as we are going to be resuming yeah. pretty soon. I believe. It seems like they're going to chrono a little bit back. Yeah, so okay. Maybe like five, that does make seconds. sense. And yeah, so just a couple so... of minutes. Uh, we are going to check out some highlights, though, before we do uh, do that. Of course, it takes a little bit of time to get that chrono break working. Ah, the joys of the remote broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. These are just some of the things that uh, that happen uh, when, we, yeah, when we're I mean, playing this... from home. <laughs> it's probably going to happen even if we were at the studio, as it has in the past. So... No difference. I'm sure the typhoon may have even um, affected that internet in that case, but I just hope that we get back on the way eventually. Yeah. And I mean, what are your impressions already? As oh wow, we've even got the highlight music. Yeah. As, uh, <laughs> it's uh, the game is not over, guys. You, you didn't miss game number one. We're, we're only about ten minutes in. I'm not gonna lie so to you. I think a freaking missed confused. the start of game number one. Um, that's that's true. This certainly yeah. was an example of uh, an early game gone wrong for a freaker. Yeah, and pretty much at every single stage in lane, Gen Two were winning. The only time that a freaker got much of anything was here, where Dread actually was ready for the counter gank that mystic i mean he's standing not behind the minions he looks very vulnerable it's a great bait and so they do get life but then they kind of botch it by going for this failed dive as they should have known that at least tp was available but also that clid could be around i mean there's zero vision so just a little bit opportunistic there yep bdd <laughs> he's gonna teleport but he's just not gonna make it very far out of that one and then once again, avoids the obliterate and obliterates uh, Fly himself. Yeah, gets the kill. It's a trade. And it does look like the minions of the red team were a little bit stronger, but it was on his side of the map, so probably just stayed there. Great ultimate comes in here from Clid. We actually missed the beginning of this fight, so good to know exactly how that happened. Clid hitting level 6 very fast, and here's BDD going for his solo kill. Yes, that was I got him. He said that early. He did get him there. He was not wrong. He already knew. 
that's what it was. He's just, you know, he's looking to the future. Mm -hmm. Already knows what's going to happen. And yeah, Fly was pretty much a sitting duck there because it's Mordekaiser with no flash. And yeah. you landed your shuriken and Mordekaiser's at half health. So yeah. it was a good, you know, just straight up solo kill there from BDD. He actually canceled the damage on his uh, shuriken and wanted to make sure that his ult didn't go too far so that he could stay in melee range and uh, get a bit mm. more of that damage. So... Nicely done, did have to flash in order to pick up the kill, but when you get a flash in a trade kill already in that mid lane, uh, it's pretty easy just to follow up, especially if you are a Kali. It just feels like uh, Fly isn't quite making this Mordekaiser work. Uh, it's just not really uh, his day on the mod here today so far, but it is still very early days. And you know, maybe you can get tanky enough in order to help take down the Akali. She's just so slippery though, it is... It's going to be a problematic problematic situation uh, here for the Mord, yeah. and that's why they've gone for a bit of a lane swap here, as we saw Jace in the mid, and uh, Mordekaiser up top. I just can't even... I can't imagine that he's going to have much of an easier time against Renekton, you know? It's like... Yeah. Uh, BDD's going to be really difficult to deal with, but at the same time, especially if Clid just goes top and ults the turret, like, Mordekaiser, yes, he's got Death Realm, but with no turret, you're probably still going to die anyway. Um, eventually, unless you've got, you know, your jungler up there at the same time. So things are looking really weak in wherever Fly goes. And already, you know, Ash, who is supposed to have some good lane presence, has already lost a little bit of that down in the bottom side. BDD's really fed. Rascal's really fed. Clid, you know, everybody on their side is really fed. It's looking really dire right now. I think Clid is Afrika. actually the most fed right now, picking up uh, yeah, he got everything really around ahead. the map. He's... He did. Yeah, could be a real problem uh, here for Afrika. Um, but it was Chen G that was kicked out of the game, so maybe this uh, this two minutes that they get to do over again might be able to to help them out. As uh, Guys, I actually fed my cats before this. I know there's a lot of people that have been asking about where the cats are. Um, they're, they're sleepy at the moment. Um, <laughs> just made sure that we yeah. weren't going to be interrupted too much. And it's not necessarily like... I, I do like it when the cats are chilling while we're, while we're just commentating the game afterwards while we're on camera but before and like my cat just absolutely loves this microphone and just wants to rub his face on it and it's very hard to commentate with a cat's Me head too. in the way um that's <laughs> my excuse anyway i'm sticking to it yeah i don't know i don't know where um my yumi is yeah where, where her is name she? is charlie but hmm. charlie is uh, a, a, sm a smaller cat <laughs> compared to dang changi the uh yeah the giant monster the giant gangster cat that you have in your house. Um, how so how cute, big is Charlie so nice. these days? Is she still smaller than uh, than my other cat, Bibian? Or is she's... she like halfway between now? <laughs> it's like she heard us talking about her. She just like ran to my doorway and just like <laughs> stuck her head out really quickly. Yep. Can you give a size assessment oh. real quick? <laughs> I, I found I found my my cat. Oh, she's not happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right, see it Charlie, because I, I don't actually get to see your video until it's like until the delays oh. come in. So I'll be able to check it out in like a few minutes time. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit unfortunate. She just boosted out of there. She's like, no, no, this guy's probably going to die soon. I got to I got to hop onto someone else. Just like <laughs> all the Yumi's in my game. But uh, not happening. She's yeah, I think she was a little bit. You know, I'm being a little bit loud because I'm casting in here and I've got like the light set up and everything. So she was maybe a little bit frightened mm -hmm. by that. Now my cat's but... actually sitting on top of my computer because it's warm. I just uh, yeah. just had to check and Bibion's just chilling under there. So I'm not going to disturb him. That's he good. likes it. Uh, you know, the, the warm fans and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Hopefully we're getting close to getting back into this game because <laughs> we've started to just only talk about cats. Because of course, guys, just to give you a, a bit of a refresher about what's happening in the game. Genji are currently stomping uh, Afrika and it's only about eight minutes into the match. So, so far, yeah. so good for Genji. But uh, with the composition that Afrika has, it's going to be very hard for them to sort of wrestle their way back in with, you know, Jace and Graves that want to have some earlier domination. Uh, not to mention the, this Mordekaiser that is just getting murdered over and over again. First, it was solo kill and trade, and then it was just solo kill and uh, and flash. And I don't know, man. I feel like BDD is yeah, having a very good day forward. already. Yeah, and I guess talking about the game, I remember I was making this elaborate point, and then Clid just like stomped two people down to the bottom side and interrupted me. But 
It's something we've been talking about a lot, actually, where Gen G and old Samsung never used to be this kind of aggressive team, but they have really adapted so well to the current meta of even just this year, even before MSC, they started to get more and more aggressive. And nowadays, you just see all of these mid-game spiking champions, like yeah. <laughs> all of them, you know? it's Now we've got Kai'Sa in the mix, we've got Renekton, Volibear, Akali. If the mid-game hits, I mean, they're already strong now, but like, it just does not look good for a champion like an Ash that needs some items, like a, a Mordekaiser that's gonna need some items. Jace would love to have some support, but it's not gonna have much. Graves, of course, would like, you know, at least a couple of items and uh yeah that's yeah. not really the meta that we're playing nowadays you know so um we we have solved the issues but i think we're still taking a little bit of time yeah we're just trying to decide where to chrono break to uh it is the first thought was about two minutes um something like that uh but we're just trying to work out exactly what the best moment is uh, uh, to go back to so we're all sorted. Gen G are back in the game, but we're just trying to work out where we need the game to be. I think yeah. it's like, if it was like a minute, like one minute, two minutes, it's probably fine. I think one minute's probably, uh, probably okay. This is, this is like always the issue, right? Where it's like, we saw that Gen G are back in the game. Everybody's connected. Uh, Corona breaking doesn't take this long. Right, but it's all about the discussion, right? It's like back and forth between the teams and the referees, and of course, obviously, because we're not on site, it's gonna take longer. Yeah. Once we have this kind of an issue, and it's, uh, yeah, it's always like, no, I, I think we should put it back to here. Uh, you know, I, I think that 10 minutes, 32 seconds is good. And then the other teams will like, you know, they, they send the message through the tubes, and then it's like, actually, I think that 10 minutes, 27 seconds is fair. And it's like, Okay, well, yeah. this is going to take a while. So the that's thing is, kind of like, what the delay is, guys. Most of the time we chrono break, uh, it's in the middle of a team fight. It's often when, you know, the teams are interacting yeah. with one another. This moment, there was no interaction between the two teams whatsoever. There was actually none. As uh, I believe we're ready to get back in. I heard production say something. No, not quite. Ah, so if Afrika took uh, Drake and we're trying to work out where we're going to put the Chrono Break based <laughs> on the dragon being taken. Um, yeah, I I guess I guess that makes sense. I, I thought about that but I wasn't you know, I wasn't sure because they saw that the Drake was taken, right? So Genji knows. Yeah, about so 30 theoretically if it ago, goes back a minute it, then they right? know exactly where the enemy jungler is. So they need yeah, to go that's not after fair. the dragon. Has died. Yeah. Or maybe Genji's saying, you know, if we weren't disconnecting, if we were coming in, and we we would we could have actually competed at the Drake. Yeah. You know, but it's uh, it's definitely a little bit complicated. So looks like we might he be here for a while. Yeah. I uh, I think just a little bit after the dragon's probably fine. We got it paused pretty quickly once people <laughs> started disconnecting. I don't know. I guess I'm I'm not a I'm not a tech guy. I don't really understand. And therefore, yeah. I'm not going to try and make assumptions as to what to do. But that's what I assume will probably happen. We're just going to have to figure that one out. As uh, Valdez, you're having a lot of requests as to whether or not you are going to play the piano uh, for the broadcast. Play the piano? Yeah, you're going to play the piano? <laughs> Am I going to play the piano? Yeah. I don't really have anything prepared right now. Do, do, do you know how to play I, uh, the piano? I know you can play the piano. I do. I do know how to play the piano. You want to just play something? So, uh, I... I don't know if anyone's played Final Fantasy X, but to Xanarkand. I reckon, I reckon there's probably someone that's played some Final Fantasy X in chat, my friend. <laughs> there's probably a, a couple that, of you out there, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that'd be Final someone Fantasy who can relate. Game, for sure. The the thing is, that song is really sad. That's okay, <laughs> we're in, we're in a really... paused game. It's not exactly a happy situation, you know? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe it, like, if you're um, playing a sad song, then it's just from the perspective of a freaker. It's still, <laughs> it's still uh, valid. Do I even have? Let me, let me take a look here. What do I got? Ooh. I have my little pedal. This is. Um, I don't know if chat, if anyone can even hear this. I can hear it. Maybe that means that they can really? hear it too. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. 
So, but I haven't played this song in like two months. <laughs> so it's been a while. Just give it a go. Come on, we're not going to judge. You're, you're here to entertain. Do it. If you if you're really terrible, it probably makes it better. Can you hear this? Uh, can you can you hear this? Go go go. Yes. I mean, I can. You can. Yep. The chat says they can. <laughs> What? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not trying to distract you. It's been a while. <laughs> there were some good bits. Atlas, have you ever, you've never played Final Fantasy X? Um, I, I just recently bought it on Nintendo Switch, so I'm, I'm yet to play through it. On Nintendo Switch? Yeah, they got re-released. It's like a remastered version, so I'm going to play that one. It's like so close to being. Is this amazing. really what we're doing right now? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. We've got nothing else to do. This is like, this is the LCK, by the way, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just sitting here in my room playing Final Fantasy X music. Like that's. This is LCK variety the, stream. Um, that's the. Uh, I think it kind of is actually. <laughs> um, we we should actually probably talk to talk to production about putting us on just chatting instead of League of Legends. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not very we're, League of Legends at the moment. We're not really playing League of Legends. Yeah. I'm just, I'm also watching, <laughs> I'm watching the Korean cast just like sit there and <laughs> not have a piano to do. <laughs> they don't have the, they they don't have the variety that we do, Atlas. No, they definitely don't. They do have Sunkei though. And he just like puts charisma in stuff and then it's all okay. That's, That's true. It's just generally how that one works. We need, we need props. Uh, speaking of props, oh, uh, you there. can get your Pog State mug. Uh, from the Pog State podcast store that doesn't exist, but you might be able to sometime <laughs> in the future, and then you might be able to get yourself yeah. a Pog State mug. They are super cool. It makes everything that you put in the mug just taste that little bit better. You know how, like, you're, you're given... Is like, if you true? If you go to the store, right, and buy yourself a cola beverage, it tastes like cola. It's fine. However, if you get one for free, it just tastes that little bit better. You know? I think the uh, the the Coke in the the glass bottle is the best. Right. You know? I mean, Have I think I think that? that's that's different. <laughs> um, it's just like uh -oh. it doesn't matter what it's contained in; it always tastes better if it's free. And that is what this mug will provide. It'll give yeah, you. I feel it'll like make we're on things the taste right better <laughs> based on placebo. <laughs> that's how it works. I, <laughs> I feel like I'm on the pog state right now, actually. I mean, you basically we, uh, are. You're going to be on the next episode as well. I don't yeah, know whether we're, we're allowed to give out spoilers, but uh, soon. We're, we're bringing the band together for the next episode. That's true. Well, I hope you have your ocarina ready. Uh, I mean, technically do I do. But okay. uh, wind well, instruments into microphones, <laughs> not exactly going to be working out here. Um, really? And I think we're going to be getting... But yeah, it's just like... it. You could play like a little bit back from the, from the mic. It should be okay i think right yeah except that i haven't played the dang thing in a very long time it's gonna sound True. like i'm well, having a me too <laughs> like a, a, a fit uh and no but the, the thing is like a piano sounds fine whereas like an example of something that frustrates people is recorder noises and an ocarina just sounds like a recorder that's in a different shape and so. got famous from zelda yeah you know? that's the uh, thing about musical instruments is like i haven't played that song for like two months but when you know you have like this repertoire that you have which is like the recently practiced songs but if you don't practice them then it's like it's gone yeah, yeah. i mean i can kind of play it but you know it wasn't like a great <laughs> version of the song right like i wasn't you know playing it very well but it's funny there's like this one song that i learned when i was like 12 that both of my brothers also learned it was called the maple leaf rag the maple leaf you... rag <laughs> yeah why does that sound so weird? Oh, maybe it's a Canadian song. I don't, no, it's not. It um, sounds pretty Canadian. Um, yeah, but it's uh, it's a good song. Mm -hmm. It's like one of the things where I'll I'll always be able to play the beginning of that song. I'll trust but, you. 
I'll trust you. I've actually, yeah. no, the, the problem is, is that I've completely forgotten. I used to be able to play, did you watch, uh, oh God, I'm going to ask you a pop culture question. No, no, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> did you watch uh, throw, Pokemon throw the Movie out. 2000? It came out did, surprisingly actually. in the year 2000, which was wow, that's weird. over 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did watch that. I was only nine, but I actually remember watching that. Um, in so theaters. one of the songs was, there, there was like an ocarina type thing. Uh, and there was a song in it called Lugia's Song, and I could play that. That's that's the oh, that's the song that I could well. play. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to hang on. Wait a second. I might be able to get it. Do you even know where it is? <laughs> it's probably in your house somewhere. What the but, the, uh, the music? Oh no, the ocarina. I, I thought the you ocarina's were gonna... right here. Oh well, I can't I can't see you. I didn't know that. All right, <laughs> but you should have been watching. Uh, Lugia's oh, Song, Ocarina Tabs. Here we go. Just, just googling it, because we may as well. Let's see whether we can, uh, we can remember how to play this thing. Can, can you just look at the tabs and play it? That's, that's pretty impressive. Do you know what the like, tabs right look away. like, Valdez? The, ta the well, tabs are just little know pictures many... of an ocarina <laughs> with like different holes covered. True. It's like I don't it's, know how it's many. Not, uh, nothing special. Uh, I don't know how many uh, like different notes and stuff you can play on an ocarina. My only image of an ocarina is from Ocarina of Time. Right. Well, that's that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Um, I think we're, resuming, we're resuming, by the way. Uh, so I don't think anyone's going to get the oh, Ocarina well, concert. I guess the podcast <laughs> is over then. Yeah. I guess uh, we'll just have to cast League of Legends on the LCK stream, Atlas. Isn't that strange? <laughs> All right. Um, I might I'm, I might practice in the break, see whether we can get something working, and then uh, I can show you guys if you still care. <laughs> Uh, as we go into game oh, two, I'm but here sure we are, guys. we're back, we've done it. We're just before yeah. the dragon, which is going yeah. to be taken. <laughs> as I just want to point out that on no... over. This is cheeky, isn't it? Because they know that Dread's there. Yeah, and there's no, there's no way for them to challenge it, right? <gasps> so why did we have to, okay, yeah. That was their, that's why we were discussing, like, how many seconds to put it on, I guess. Void Seeker oh, challenge, there we go. Well. After um, <laughs> after this, after a couple of games, Atlas, I think maybe you're gonna have to give us an ocarina concert. There's the ocarina Otherwise, waiting room. It's gonna be the, uh... ocarina waiting room until the end of this series. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got uh, still that uh, three thousand gold. Let's um, let's do a bit of a bit of a taking stock of the situation because I know cat. that uh, you know, we had a conversation about cats, ocarinas, all sorts of weird stuff, uh, and we haven't really focused on the game too much. Um, it is a three thousand gold lead for Gen G. Things went horrifically wrong for Afrika on the top side of the map very very early before the minions had spawned. Dread died, you know, in between the inner and outer turrets of the top lane of Gen G, and that is uh, generally a suboptimal situation uh, for your jungler in the early game. Uh, as you can see also, BDD is uh, beating Fly by a lot of farm, and Life likes throwing barrels around, and in goes a big old bear ruler, jumping behind Mystic, and is this a replay? Because it looks very similar to his last <laughs> double kill, uh, and it is going to play out yeah. exactly the same way, apart from Life stealing away one of them. Yeah, I mean, it was a good unbreakable, but at the same time, as, oh, might have to hold that thought. They're trying to bait BDD into this, but BDD, it looks like he saw Dread, and so, well, he definitely sees him now. Yeah. And... Yeah, nothing's going to come of that, but yeah, I mean, good Unbreakable from Ben, but it just did not matter because they're just so fed as we got more fighting up in the top lane. Slice. Rascal is going to get over the wall. Yep, that's going to be absolutely fine. As uh, Clid comes down, he's going to deliver Ruler a whole bunch of money. And uh, Shelly's going to grab them the first turret of the game at 11 and a half minutes. What's going on It's here? getting worse, Valdez. <laughs> it's getting worse. Yeah. Ben is just like, well, actually, I don't want to support Mystic anymore, so I'm going to come mid. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do this in my solo queue games. Um, <laughs> is but, there yeah, someone ben else is... <laughs> I can support uh, for yeah. this one? Ben is going to eventually go down there and soak some of the XP there. But you can see what happens here. Ben is going to get the shield up, but it's still going to land. But it actually pushes them both away. It still doesn't matter, though, because it's Kai'Sa. And this is what Kaisa's really good at. We don't see a lot of great Kaisa in the LCK as, okay, Another Mordecai's solo kill for BDD. Uh, wants yeah. to get himself a pog point as the arrow is going to cascade forward. BDD probably should die here as Smokescreen goes down. And uh, he is able to backflip away. Oh my god. Okay, the Graves is going to be able to lock that one <laughs> down in the end. BDD, no flash. 
no ulti, no chance to escape from that one. But he's now 4, 2, and 0. And uh, his opponent is 0 and 3, and that's two solo kills so far in this lane. I'd say still a net positive for the Gen G player of the game mid laner. Yeah, you know, I think it's okay. I think Gen G are in an all right position right now. As we are going to see the kill here, Death Realm and Flash are available, and Fly is just forced to use it. And even with Dread nearby, still able to just get in there. He is so fed at this point in time, as the arrow seals wide and there are a million enemies around him, but he dies valiantly. He wastes a lot of time, by the way, and eventually even King gets frustrated. He's like, come on, guys. Like, are you not going to kill him? Do I have to take the kill? And so delays a little bit of the push down on the bottom side, some of the farming from Dread. And the Hexec Gunblade is already done here from BDD compared to just the Proto Belt of Fly. This yeah. is not a very equal lane state. Definitely not. This is our Genji feeling very happy. Level 11 before Fly as well as the Death Grip does come through. Um, and Fly bringing up that passive actually uh, isn't doing too badly here. But he's going to hop over and uh, move towards the river potentially. Actually just looking for vision. As you can see, top side of the map, Genji absolutely owns. They've got a circle uh, around the red buff. And that means basically that Dread is just not allowed to really go towards his top side. As Renekton's moving towards bottom, you've got uh, a bear and a Gragas towards this mid lane as now Fly moves into the river. Dangerous territory. He's a big old, uh, big old Mordekaiser. <laughs> He'll be fine. Fly, chill as always. Yeah. Doesn't care just about cruising. the lane state or the game state. He's just going to give you the thumbs up and walk by. <laughs> and you can see that Dinji are setting up for this engage. Ruler and Clid can engage at the drop of a hat pretty much whenever. And could have mean while it is three on four as we got a fight down here. Yeah, Fly and Rascal fighting one another as uh, Fly's going down pretty low. Proto Belts doesn't get any damage for it and then just gets um, culled. Um, that's what happens when you when you uh, fight a two and zero Renekton at 14 minutes into the game. Clid now in maybe a little bit of trouble, but no, he's just going to be able to wander out. And BDD in the meantime is just uh, taking it in in a turret. Earlier, as the All hitbox right. on Ash Arrow has <laughs> like gotten smaller this game, I swear to God. <laughs> well, oh, uh, they needed a lot of help, and Ash Arrow isn't helping out. I'm not sure if they could have even done anything, even if that did land. It just feels like desperation right now for Afrika. They're like, we desperately need to get something. As BDD is solo pushing top lane. Already so many of the structures have gone down, and this Infernal is uh, also okay, okay. going to go the way of Genji. As here's the solo kill. Pretty straight up. Yep. Rascal uh, just walks back, at him. He's got the shield break because it is Renekton, so it's very yeah, good against play? Mordekaiser. Uh -huh. Yeah. That, I don't, look, it's just it's not Mordekaiser's death realm. Uh, it's it's definitely Rascal's in that instance. Yeah. Oh, three Pretty much zero. anybody else's. <laughs> it's uh, it's real scary. Real, They're all real living scary. rent free in the death realm, <laughs> enjoying their time. And uh, this series. Looks very different to the one that we saw a couple of days ago. It, of course, guys, I, I don't want you to get too ahead of yourselves. It's just game number one, and yeah. the early game before even the minions spawned kind of led us to get into this game state. So we'll see how Afrika can do on a more even playing field. Let's just say that this this game, if it was a scrim, would have been cancelled at three minutes. Uh, almost 100%. For sure. Uh, end of the line is going to come through. Half the health bar of life has been taken. Is uh, Clit as well. It's going to walk away from Dread at the moment on the Riot Graves. Void Seeker doesn't find the mark as life gets tagged by the volley, but he'll be fine. He's a very nimble hillbilly. And as Rascal over here gets a pretty good trade onto Keen, who's still farming nicely on the Jace. That's certainly something. <laughs> Whether it's enough <laughs> is another question. Yeah. Do you see the Gragas attack over the wall? That was pretty funny. With his, uh, with his W. No. Nice. It's that, uh, little bit of extra attack range. I think I missed that I one. I believe. And, uh, we got all the teleports coming in now. Just taking down turrets. There's nobody here in the bottom side. Ah, uh, yes. As the King... classic Akali Renekton split push combo. Yeah, well. <laughs> They're so far ahead, it's like, well... Yeah, it doesn't matter what which champions gonna do. they are. It, it, it could have been all for one mid. minute, and it'd still be the same thing. Yeah. And I don't really know why he teleported mid, you know? It's, uh... It's either you give the mid tier one, or you give the bot tier two. Uh, 
Just not many great trades for a freak to take right now, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, they're a bit fresh out of good options as Clid. Oh. Looking for the dive. This is massive. In goes Ruler. Killer Instinct is going to be there as Ben. Oh. Yeah, that shield was going the wrong direction. Definitely some low health bars as life goes down to about 200. Is now beat it. He misses the Shuriken. And Clid's trying to escape, Ooh. but he's not going to be able to. Now Dread getting chased by Ruler. And BDD in his shroud wants to get out, does so as Keen's gonna get executed. Death Realm comes through, we'll see whether BDD can keep himself alive as he runs to the edge, but he's not able to get out. And Fly is gonna be able to get a decent shutdown there. They're still down 8,000 gold. Afrika's still in trouble, but being able to kill BDD must have felt good. Yeah, maybe give them a little bit of a morale boost before game number two, because that's about all they've got for now. Um, so many items completed on everybody Ooh. on the side of Gen G. Really fast flash, but the slow comes in. Yeah, immediately the flash afterwards as well, as Mystic is going to be able to land it. And Ruler, yeah, he gives up. He knows that he's dead, and uh, Gen G, maybe uh, getting a little bit ahead of themselves uh, in this game, as they just had a all-team brain fade moment. And let's have a look at this replay once again. Yeah, I mean, you're not safe under your mid-tier one, which is why I was a little bit confused as to why they tried so hard to save it, because this is an amazing tower diving comp with Volibear and Gragas, and they're able to get over there, nice to sable on the turret. Clid still dies to the turret shot, which is kind of funny. BDD, you're thinking maybe they're going to get him right here. Actually flashes a bit of the damage that was coming out to make sure that he could pick up the kill. Still goes down, and like you said, you know, it's... Um, well, we actually didn't get to see this, so let's see how yeah. Dread goes down. If he goes down. No, he does go down. He gets <laughs> shot by skills that Kaiser has. Um, surprise, surprise. And uh, this was Ruler deciding to die. Yeah. Bit unfortunate. I, he was just reacting as fast as he could. Probably had his mouse down there. We got another fight in the top lane. Yep, uh, Fly's gonna get sliced, diced, and uh, he's gonna have to flash away if he wants to keep himself alive. Dread gets a fair bit of damage there onto the crocodile, but otherwise he's not too worried about it. Shock Blast, really gonna chunk the bottom lane of Gen G here. As Mystic, he's running out of turrets to stand under. To be perfectly honest, Rascal looking to try and finish this one off, and uh, BDD certainly did a pretty good job when it comes to softening this inner turret on the top side. End of the line, just gonna help take that one down, and Dread will clear out the last remaining minion. So. The tower su survives on just a sliver. But at 7,000 gold, still the lead. And Gen G in all of the control here at 20 minutes as it just ticks over. And there goes the turret. Now Rascal. Trying to fight off against Keen here as the arrow is going to sail into the nether. But Keen is able to pick up the kill on the crocodile. Nothing really that Clid could do about it. Stormstrike goes down, gets itself... Bit of damage there as Ruler isn't going to be able to find the Void Seeker as Ulti into the backline. Mystic gets destroyed. Another fantastic cast from Life as Keen oh. <laughs> is going to get taken down. And now BDD's found himself into the fight. Ben also going to be taken down. It's a double kill for the Akali. And Genji find their opportunity and they strike. Yeah, that's got to hurt. They all got surrounded there, chasing way too far down the lane. Uh, after picking up the kill. I think you get the Renekt and try to back. I mean, you got so many shutdowns, but either way, they get caught out. The high mobility of the Genji's composition is able to catch up. You can see how the Kai'Sa loves this composition. Rascal is really angry, would love a kill here. Yep, looking to try and take down Fly here. Underneath the turret as the Death Realm does come in. Rascal's going to move out of turret range, but the Death Realm comes forward. Let's see whether he can keep himself alive here. Colomy comes through, tries to get out of the way. But isn't able to. <laughs> he throws up the whole long Jew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. I mean, Rascal was a former long Jew player, uh, yeah. theoretically. I think it was actually a uh, King Zone. And perplexing. At the yeah, time. well. Here's the Rascal trying to kill the turret. So he reaches for two things in a row, actually. Reaches for the turret, reaches for the kill onto the Mordecai for later on. Later on. And. The good thing about it, I suppose, is that he baited the entire enemy team, minus Fly, into dying. So, he just said, great bait, mate, and gets in there. Does a good job. Here's Dread now. Yep, uh, Dread's found life, and BDD has also found them as collateral damage comes forward. BDD going to ult himself over the wall, and five point strike going to finish that one off all too easy. There for the Akali, who is mega fed. Eight and three. 
has uh, double penetration items as well as a Zonya's and a uh, uh, X-Tech Conblade. Good god, he's just so massive. That's too many items. So... Oh man, that's crazy. Can right Ben now. and Kane actually kill Rascal is the question. And the answer from and a Freaker fly. is no. They're going to need Fly here as well. Death's Grasp comes forward, but it's not going to be able to land as now Rascal. With Winter's Bite on him, he's still going to be able to make his way out. And uh, yeah, Concussive Blow is not actually able to be propped either. So yeah, escapes. And in the meantime, uh, oh. as the Baron was taken from earlier, oh, <laughs> the arrow just avoided no by the bully. supercharged... Hi, sir. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's gotta feel bad. Yeah, this well, doesn't have missing. much longer, does it, Valdez? Yeah. Should probably avert your eyes if you are feeling a little bit queasy right now. As uh, it is a mega stomp here in game number one. This is not a close game by Four. any means. In goes BDD, but... Thread throws down the collateral damage. BDD's very tanky at the moment. Is now Rascal with the Dominus popped. He's going to get stunned most likely as the flash forward. Winter's Bite comes down. Call the Meek not, not going to do anything. But in the meantime, these uh, Nexus turrets are going to be taken very, very low. Only one of them remaining. As Keen teleported in, there's the ulti from cleared. In goes Ruler with the Killer Instinct. And it is exactly that Dread on his Fountain Ben. I mean, he's got the Slay out. He's looking forward to Christmas, but not for the League of Legends. Probably for the presence as the Nexus will be taken down. Ruler oh, is going man. to grab all of the kills <laughs> and the kill on the Nexus and throws up the Samsung Galaxy logo. Gen G. I mean, the only reason this game was really long was because we were paused for like 45 yeah. minutes in the middle. <laughs> that was like a normal game length, except with the pause and the, and the podcasts and everything. Yeah. Uh, a freak are going to have to take a long look at themselves after that one because the Level one, didn't seem like there was much communication. Fly wasn't there. They were going way too deep. They didn't have wards to see where the enemy was. The two of them get caught. They get to their lanes and jungle very late. And of course, Renekton is going to be okay, even though he did show up a little bit late up in the top side. And then that wasn't the end. Genji just kind of smurfed on them in all lanes after that to make it an incredibly one-sided game. And I guess that's why we play best of fives from here on out, right? You get you get one, you get two little mix-up games, and then you can just, you know, maybe try to get things going for your team. Yeah, and I think everyone has these games. I don't think this is something to say that, you know, a, a freak or a, a really terrible team in Gen.G are just going to do this every single game. Things went horribly wrong for them in the early game, and it happens to a lot of teams. That's why Best of Ones are so volatile. Uh, it's because if that happens, you don't get to see necessarily the potential of both of the teams represented at the same time. Something went catas catastrophically wrong, and uh, Genji just got out to the early lead and snowballed it through. I'm um, not going to take away anything from Genji. I think they were able to nurture the snowball very effectively. Um, but it doesn't necessarily show us uh, what a freaker are capable of. Is This is the moment that I'm referring to. Yeah, I mean, the dash over the wall means that Dread is dead unless he flashes like right now <laughs> because he sees the other two but instead he's like well let's try to let's try to make something up this maybe i can kill rascal fly you can see is very late and dread goes down and then right from there i mean if renekton gets a nice gank in the early game you're gonna have a good game on renekton anyway but he had already gotten the one kill this is the one moment yeah the one the one moment of the game that's it that afrika looked okay they it did. was uh, a bait. Dread was in the right spot at the right time. But that was it. Yeah, not too many other positive moments. Clit's positioning, very, very good this game. The teleport in uh, was cancelled, like we spoke about before, but that spelled the end of the Mordekaiser. Also, as uh, we can see this moment, BDD just playing some pretty immaculate Akali and finding that perfect execution on the, on the ulti. Very, very nicely done. There was a trade kill before that, which was the result of that, uh, uh, the result of the teleport being cancelled. As Rascal is just going to kill an underfed Mordekaiser pretty comfortably, as this dive was odd from Gen.G. They were trying to swing their money around a little bit more than I think they necessarily should have, but that's okay. And, uh, for yeah. POG Valdez. Do you have mm -hmm. to give it to BDD, or do you think that Life's Gragas was just uh, super good? Do you think Clid's positioning actually, was good? I gave like, it to Clid, yeah. Yeah. I, I think that Clid um, just did way too much in the early game, right? Like, there are early game leads from 
you know, invades and, and, and weird level one shenanigans. And then there are the insane leads that you give your team by following up on that by doing pretty much three pristine ganks. And so that's why I'm going to give it to him. I think BDD, you know, he, he's, he's definitely a really fantastic Akali player, but he kind of just got himself fed, whereas I think Clid had uh, many different effects on many different lanes and had a fantastic performance on the jungle Volibear. Bear. And yeah, as you were saying, it was kind of like by the end of this game, like, Gen G weren't even, it didn't even look like they were playing a serious, you know, they weren't trying to hold it in and play super safe. They're just like, you know, everything's out, all the guns are out, let's just go in there and flex on them. And yeah. that's actually something good, you know, to get into the, into the mental game, to get into the heads of your opponents, because if I'm a freak, I'm feeling pretty bad after losing <laughs> that kind of game. 100%. You can see the, the gold lead certainly went up very linearly for uh, Gen G. And there was a, uh, a Mountain Drake that was taken by Afrika, so they escaped yeah. the perfect game by getting a couple of kills here and there, a tower, things like that, but uh, it did really feel like Genji ran away with it. 24 minutes was on the clock. For us, it felt like more like 54 minutes, but just 24, mm -hmm. a shellacking in game number one from Genji, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Afrika can do as they move to potentially the other side of the rift. Remember, guys, side selection works. It's not like they swap. It's uh, that now a freaker gets to choose which side of the rift they're going to be on. I expect them to be on blue as we return from a very short break. We'll see you then. Oh, 
이 거든요. KT? KT 들어갈 생각입니다. 어, 버터스 오데가 먹었는데. 아니, 자, 한타 봐야 돼요. 한타 봐야 돼요. 한타. 근데 에이밍이 일단 딜하거든요. 플라이가, 플라이가. 와, 그리고 강버스 이거 좀 대박. 오, 예. 와, 플라이가 진짜 세. 지금 아쿠아치가 이렇게. 와, 와. 끼리 거침없이 즐겨하는 하더니 어? 나 6레 그런데 6레 6레 미치도 침착하게 네. 6레 맞춰 찍었고 그 다음에 친구가 오 어, 이거 비겁하다고 왜 친구 같은데요? 친구는 왜 아직도 여기 있는 거야? 막 이런 생각 딱할거 네. 같은데요? 그러면 가야죠 아, 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 그런데 이 수가 아니 이거 있어 쓰레가 누가 아, 있어 어리게 찍어 어리 The stage is set. The curtain is drawn. 没人能够预见会是这种情况。This is the key people want to see. 新的王者诞生了。Kaboom! They lit the fuse. 你看到了吗？ They're gonna win. This is it. 레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레레
right from the get-go. He was top, he was bot, he was everywhere. And it's so hard for Riga to deal with this level 6 bear. Yeah. Uh, he was setting up absolutely everything. He uh, definitely was uh, handed an early game, but he followed up just beautifully. I mean, they did this gank twice, and it worked both times. And uh, this was with Ruler having both summoners, like... It was pretty impressive. This wasn't necessarily a highlight. I hope we're cutting the video a little bit early. <laughs> yeah, well, still got it going. You know, maybe a little, little bit too much there towards the end, but, <laughs> but they, they cut, cut it right the at the end, right before he died. Love it. And uh, seven out of nine. So only one Korean cast who voted for Ruler and the Chinese cast voted for BDD. So just a little bit of uh, you know, showing up from the other different lanes there makes sense, but overall, just a great performance from Gen G. And I would expect game two, maybe not to go similarly, but I think that Gen G have a huge. Um, I think everybody's expecting them to win this next one as well. Oh, absolutely. I don't think that there's very many doubts in people's minds, but I think it'll still uh, still answer some questions. As Spirit going to be coming in pretty early in this series, I was expecting him to sort of sit back and wait. But uh, just going to get Dread out of there ASAP. Here are Afrika, and we'll see what Spirit has learnt from that one game. I have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion, that he hasn't learnt very much at all. <laughs> yeah. uh, because that game really didn't teach uh, anyone anything. I think they just want a switch yeah. of mindset as they move on in, because it wasn't exactly a great time for Dread. Currently, Afrika are missing a bottom lane, and so we'll see whether Mystic and Ben are actually going to be able to make their way back. Uh, in time for the draft that is going to be coming up pretty shortly. I think, you know, they're probably just checking the surrounding areas to make sure that there are no bears. And so they know that they're safe for game number two, because I would have uh, some big bear trauma after that game, <laughs> as uh, Clid was just so annoying for them to deal with. There's absolutely uh, nothing worse dive. than bear trauma. That's absolutely yeah. true. <laughs> Looks well, like we're, I, we're struggling sure a little bit uh, to get bears. into this game. It might have mm -hmm. been a bathroom break or something like that uh, for Mystic and Ben. And they're okay. back now, as you can see. Ben in his just chill hoodie. I don't know. It's pale purple. Mystic got a drink hoodie. of some sort. Some Whoa. coffee, perhaps. How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I really want this to actually, uh, you know, get a bit more competitive. Uh Really hoping that Afrika can show up here in game number two and show us exactly what they were capable of because this is the team that knocked down T1, right? And T1 were looking on a tear towards the end of the summer season. It looked like they deserved their four-place finish and uh, weren't able to beat the fifth-place team uh, that they'd been able to take down throughout the entirety of the year. So I want to know what the secret stuff that Afrika had was. As here we are, into the draft for game number two. Afrika will remain on the red side and this was their decision. So let's see what they have planned for it, because it didn't work out at all in game number one. Yeah, it's a little bit of a weird choice, but I would imagine this means that they saw the draft and they feel like, oh, we made a big mistake here. Uh, let's change it up in this manner. Or, you know, let's ban these specific champions. We still like the red side. Let's see what we can do with it. And this, it's a little bit scary to do this kind of decision, though, because if you lose again, then Genji just picked blue for game three. Yeah, and then what do you <laughs> and do? And you're like, well, uh, all right. Um, well, yeah. I, I would imagine they would start with a Volibear ban, especially after banning Set. I don't think they're going to let that one go through again, would be my guess. Well, let's see. Uh, the TF going to be taken away here on Genji's side after the Caitlyn. Afrika did manage to fit in a Senna ban last time, but this time they are going to ban away the Akali and make sure that BDD isn't going to be having all of those good times that he was able to have on that champion. I think Twisted Fate is a great ban. Um, Fly actually had some good performances on the champion, as Lilia is going to be taken off the board as well. And uh, they have to have a bit of a change of mindset. This is Spirit now. It's the mad scientist in the jungle for Afrika. And so Cleared not exactly going to be as comfortable understanding exactly how he's going to play. Because he can play aggressively, he can play defensively, he can play poppy. You just don't know. So, uh, I mean, it seems like Afrika went into this draft and said BDD was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Let's ban away Akali and Set and Azir and give them Volibear again? I mean, you can take away Renekton 
And maybe that's part of the, you know, Spirit's a great Lilia player, but Lilia is also great alongside the Renekton. No sign of Nidalee at all in game number one. Maybe we will see that this time around. Ooh. Or maybe just Jungle Poppy. That would be interesting. Okay. Poppy is being considered. This is, of course, a Spirit special. Fly also likes playing it in the mid lane sometimes, but this would be the understandable pickup. And uh, we're going back to the meta picks, our Afrika, and I think that's a good idea after getting absolutely clobbered in game number one. Gen G to round out their first round of picks right now, as Clid will be playing the Volibear, but they're going to pick up the Ash, as that wasn't prioritized this time by Afrika. They could just lock in Ash Karma if they would like to, and then they've got strong jungle and bottom lane, and they leave everything else sort of up and available. Uh, and flexible, yeah. but I, I wouldn't mind Lucian being picked up, or potentially a mid lane pick here as BDD is hovering the Zoe, as you can see. This would be a blind pick Zoe uh, that does come out here, but BDD, as we were all talking about, <laughs> amazing Zoe player, did fall a tiny bit out of the meta. You know, it, it's still obviously in the meta, but it wasn't as dominant or highly prioritized in like the last couple of weeks compared to the couple of weeks before that. Fly is considering playing Orianna. He did have actually some good games on Orianna this season, even ones where his team was getting destroyed, but he was getting amazing shockwaves and doing yeah. a decent job. So definitely knows how to pilot this pick. Also, you know, knows how to play a lot of things into Zoe because of course uh, he is a very good Zoe player himself. So not gonna be too worried about that one as there's the Orn ban up against Rascal. Horn, definitely one of those answers to the Renekton that you can bring out. And Keen not wanting to fight against uh, Rascal's Orn because he's very good at the champion. Now, Genji, think about what else they're going to go for. Is Ezreal going to be taken off the board? Might just be Mystic Bands uh, across this one. You were mentioning the Lucian. I wonder if they would go ahead and ban that away. If they would give Rascal. Um, you know, the credit to pick up that pick. It is very strong in soul lanes nowadays. Instead, they're gonna ban away Lee Sin, which is, of course, it's a it's a great Clid pick, but, but what, I, what, I think- But what's the Volley Bear gonna do? Oh, yeah, that's, what? <laughs> uh, the Wait. support Volley Bear was obviously oh, oh, going yes. to be the choice. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 that didn't even, I mean, it could, of course, Click be top lane Volibear, but it's now. not a great matchup for Volibear yes. into Renekton, so... But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's very strange. Very strange. Um, they're obviously giving credit to Mega Flexing going on here on the side of Gen G. Good old Mega um, Flexing. Love it. <laughs> you know, they saw the Freljord combo, and they're like, well, those two must be together. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um... Well, what Pretty are Afrika going to pick up here? I think they're looking for probably an AD. Yeah, and that is going to be the choice. Now, I mean, life can pick away Rakan if you'd like to. Um, to deny the lover's duo. But Ash Rakan, I mean, it's a lot of CC, but it's not exactly a staple bottom lane. Yeah. Curious that uh, they didn't pick the Rakan first. Yeah. Right, because if you're going Zaya Rakan and you absolutely want that duo, then just pick Rakan, because they're not going to pick Zaya, but they do actually have a chance to pick Rakan. Um, but either way, they're going to get Zaya. Maybe it's going to be played with something else, as Braum is going to be the selection here. So Ash Braum again, Very except this audio. time being played by Ruler and Life. Okay, we're looking for a top laner, most likely. Unless Rascal is indeed going to play the bear. And that might actually just be the case here. As yeah. Graves hovered and locked in. So, Afrika did have the correct read with that Lee Sin ban. Understanding that Rascal is uh, a little bit of a bear enthusiast also. And uh, the Rakan for the last pick, a pretty obvious one here for Afrika. As Genji decided not to take that one away. And so the Lovers duo out there on the bottom side trying to deal with the Ash and Braum. A much more comfortable comp coming out of Afrika, but still needs to get some work done early with uh, the late game insurance policies being the Orianna and the Zaya. Renekton has to be basically the sole ball carrier. I don't know whether, I mean, Rakan can theoretically do it with the grand entrance into a knockup, into a shockwave, things like that, but he is very squishy. And uh, so it's not exactly a reliable combo. I think Keen's gonna have to do some work here this game. 
Yeah, he absolutely will have to. And, I mean, they do have that top-tier duo, essentially, right now in the way the meta has shifted for the LCK. And we'll see what they can get done if Spirit can really make the difference from the jungle compared to what Cl or rather Dread was able to do. And it's interesting to see the Graves get more and more priority here. I, I think people are just trying to figure out answers to all of these strong AP jungler picks. And maybe that's part of the reason why Afrika knew it. They're like, well, they're not going to want to play Volibear into Nidalee, so maybe they'll flex at top. And so we'll, you know, we'll expect something else in the jungle. So they ban away the Lee Sin, but Clid still gets the Graves. And they have an immense amount of poke, actually, in their lineup there, Genji do. Yeah, they do. Um, and a lot of early game power as well, not to mention uh, vision control around the map. And I think the Hawk Shot's going to be important, not to mention the portal jump, giving you that extra vision over walls and things like that. But I want to see what the top lane uh, Volibear is going to be able to do into the Renekton. Definitely a very Animal Kingdom type matchup, as here we are into game number two. Gen G versus Afrika. No side switch. Afrika chose to stay on red side, as I assume their invade is going to not be the same as last game. <laughs> yeah. The teammates are saying, get the hell away from their jungle. As we have a pause. Oh, dear. Atlas. <laughs> Does that mean that it's time? I think the harmonica gods have shined down on us. <laughs> if I, only I, I played we the gonna... harmonica. And it Actually, harmonica would be way pause. easier. You know, you just put your mouth on it. It sort of sounds like you're playing country music. Or Zocarina, they, yeah, you know, they just, yeah. you gotta... I was practicing in the break. I actually was. <laughs> um, That's good. But That's I, good. I haven't... Because <laughs> I assumed something like this would happen. But I just, I don't know whether I'm back to my, my former skills that I used to have. Not that I really oh, have any. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> oh, God. We, uh... No confirmation of what has actually happened, guys. Yeah, uh, I'd like to figure out what's going yet. on first, you know. Yeah, we need to have when a bit of an some... understanding of uh, how long this is going to last. Uh, as production, I am sure, will uh, glean that information for us. As I believe is, uh, is life there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there, there he is. There. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was, I saw the back of, yeah, I don't know. There's a PC overlay issue somewhere, I believe, what for What kind Clear. of overlay is he using? What? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. And it's not a PC overlay, it's a spaceship overlay. That's true. Hmm. You gotta be very specific about that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he's on the phone. Yeah. Referees and in the building, of course. At, uh, BDD. Oh boy. Okay. They're like, oh, you're not allowed to use that overlay. <laughs> 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 we should take that away from you. Oh, it, it shows um, which camp was recently taken. Ah, oh, you should probably take that down. Um, oh god. No, obviously, obviously that was all checked before the games, guys. Before. Yep. That's impossible. Tweets at me. Not going to be a thing. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, it seems like Spirit's also kind of being checked out here a little bit. He's also giggling a lot. Referees. Maybe he's just having a good time. I don't know. He's just chatting. Just chatting to the referees. Just like what this uh, this stream needs to be changed to. Uh, just, Maybe just, we're just chatting just again, chatting. Valdez. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. This is maybe they maybe they found Spirit's DDoS tool. <laughs> like, oh, we gotta take oh, this God. away <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> from game one. <laughs> yeah. It was embedded in Skype. Yeah. Yeah. Dang it. Of course. Skype. Every Skype single is time. always the problem. Every single time. You know what just like randomly started starting up again on my computer? Skype? <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, why are you here again? <laughs> yeah. Please stop. I, Mine I keeps telling me to updates. like update a like Microsoft password or something like that. And I'm like, I don't even know that I have a Microsoft password, Skype. Yeah. Plus, don't talk to they me anymore. For you. <laughs> it's like we broke up years ago. Please take the hint, Skype. Like it's just not happening. Yeah, there's. Uh... It's actually really sad. <laughs> Even my parents, like, because of the the Zoom thing that's still happening. My parents are in Victoria, in uh, in Melbourne, and of course, you know, with COVID nineteen, there is a lot of new restrictions that have been in place. So they have a lot of like Zoomers Zoom dinner parties. <laughs> my parents are sixty, <laughs> oh, really? by the way, like just over sixty. And uh -huh. so they're having like a lot of Zoom dinner parties 
uh, with their with their friends. That's cool. I know. I know. They're, they're way cooler than I am. I swear to God. Um, <laughs> you, you never have any dinner parties with me. I know. We don't, well, I mean, we, we play <laughs> video games on? together. We don't have dinner parties where we have like glasses of wine and stuff like that true. and sit around That's having true. dinner. My dad even cooked everybody else dinner, sent them the dinner for them to prepare. What? And then they had like a dinner party where they were all eating the same meal. It That's was uh, crazy. It was very creative. It was <laughs> very, so very crazy. Creative. Oh, man. Uh, I, I never would have guessed that that it would even be possible. But... He's a retired engineer, so maybe that's just what <laughs> happens. You <laughs> he know, found a way. Yeah. <laughs> that's a cool skin. Yeah, that is a cool one. Very colorful. I feel like I'm I'm watching the the Lion King with the contrast turned way up. Yes, <laughs> fly is in a little bit. Of trouble oh god, here. this is another level one that isn't really working out. Here is Clid. Just flash. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the Winter's Bite connects. The flash over from Clid. This is the person you don't want picking up the kill. As Ruler, not going to be able to get in there and grab it. He just wanted to put himself down. The beautiful Samsung Galaxy logo, as First Blood did uh, did happen once again. Uh, within the two minute mark, and we might have a repeat um, <laughs> of game one. Why is this happening? Like, well, you see, Fly was in the river, surrounded by four members of Gen G. Yeah, and he has nowhere good to flash to. So I'm like, just flash, but on second look, I'm like, well, if he flashes the wall, he would have had to flash the winner's bite. That would have maybe been the one thing where Genji's like, okay, let's let him go. You know, we don't need to expend, uh, you know, a couple of flashes or anything to get him because he wouldn't have been as slow, etc. Yeah. But either way. Hindsight's was, 20, uh, 20 my friend. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's easy to say exactly. what he should have done, but it's harder to be him in that exact moment. But it's also going to be much harder for a freaker to play this game, 0-1 down with an Oriana that has no summoner spells in the mid lane up against BDD Zoe. And well, they're lucky Clid's grade. Like, this is going to be really, really yeah. difficult. They're lucky it's not, like, a, a really strong ganking jungler because Oriana would just have to be the, the saddest, safest um, mid laner in the world. But thankfully, she's got Nidalee. She's, you know, she's got a little bit of health. Graves isn't going to be able to run in, flash, and stun or anything like that. Ruler does have some insane... Stats, by the way, uh, across damage the board. different at fifth difference at 15 minutes is insane. A thousand more damage than his opponent at 15 minutes is pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, over the season, duo proximity too. He's ninth, so I guess he's right behind. Yeah, he goes ghost as, oh as oh dear spirit waiting for the pounce or the flash. He decides not to do either of them. Doesn't have his flash available, of course, and didn't quite have quick draw back off cooldown. As he'll say, thank you very much for the leash of your own Krug camp. As uh, Mafia Graves definitely dressed for the occasion, <laughs> stealing everything away from Spirit. Yeah, he's just like going in the jungle right after. He's like, oh, maybe, maybe the middle is here. But instead, he's just going to go take the Scuttle Crab. Top lane looks like Volibear is doing just fine. And no problems there. Of course, with no Nidalee to worry about, Volibear can be a lot more aggressive. After the flash was just taken away as, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, as, uh, remember no cleanse. As I was waiting, Clid's gonna be able just to get it. this kill very easily with the end of the line. And, uh, yeah, it's a scarily named ability, that one. Because it might be referring to the game, it might be referring to the lane, and it also might be referring to the series. Yeah, uh, not much of a series so far, to be perfectly honest. I mean, Genji have just been taking it to them in a couple of games, and I was mentioning, oh yeah, Fly should be okay. Well, actually, up against BDD Zoe, I, I think Fly is definitely going to have a hard time, especially before he gets boots. He's not really going to be able to dodge trouble bubbles. BDD is so accurate with that ability. Didn't Ooh, even need to flash. Very nice double knockoff here as Ruler throws out the heal through the Ignite. Not exactly the highest value, but it does keep him alive. As life is going to stand behind Ruler. And Spirit misses the spear. Genji still in a little bit of trouble. Graves nowhere to be found. Double teleports are up here from Genji, but they don't really want to invest them as Blade Caller. He's going to cause life to have to pop another potion. Ben... Has to get out of there. Teleport does come forward here from B to D. The Ignite was down, but Ben's going to survive. And Bubble will not connect. Yeah, not quite connecting there. And you are mentioning the Graves. Nowhere to be found. He's just power farming right now. I wonder if he can just get like a full jungle item. 
Let's see. No, not quite. <laughs> Pretty but, close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's five minutes into the game, so if he did get it, uh, there would have been some pain on the side of Afrika. And the the speed boost from the Zoe makes it so difficult for Oriana without boots to do much. You see how BDD waits out the entirety of the Trouble Bubble Sleep to make sure that uh, Clib gets there so he can do his bit of damage. And just on time are some stats cool. here. There's another one. As uh, Fly doesn't actually use his cleanse, did have that one back available. Zoe versus Oriana is looking pretty Zoe favored here in the LCK. Remember, it was the Oriana picked into the Zoe. Um, so, you know, use that information as you will. Yeah. The thing about the Oriana into the Zoe is that um, you, know, you know that Zoe is going to be coming at you with a lot of portal jumps and. It's going to be very obvious where she goes to. We got another trade here, though. Yeah, another good double knock up there from Ben, who battle dances back to Mystic. Mystic in trouble, though, doesn't have the Feather Storm, so he's going to have to flash. Is now Ben, end of the line, comes oh. through once again. Clid, is it going to be back to back? Oh, oh. oh my. Uh, 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 that, was, that was not a good look. That was suboptimal. Like <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. In the cons Here's column, strength. is that one? He's still living through game number one, you know? It's. Uh, <laughs> Oh god. It's like, well, I was just able to, you know, kind of do whatever I wanted in game number one, so. Oh, Rascal finds Spirit actually is taking a lot of damage. What the teleport, what on? was that? He wasn't even looking at his jungler dying on the top side, and Keen is trying to get forward looking for Ruler, who's just going to flash his way out. Oh, oh no, that's, no, no, this no. is an example of some tilt. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should be bringing out the Ocarina because I think this game might be over. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a concert in game yeah, three. Yeah, exactly. If it goes like this again, I man. need to learn ocarina. Sorry, uh, I need to learn the ocarina version of uh, Yakety Sax. That's what I need. Oh yeah. I just um, <laughs> I don't know how to play that Please one. Please do. That's uh, that's oh. unfortunate. I don't even know how to play it on my saxophone, so it's just I'm a letdown uh, across the board. I don't even I don't even know. I mean, okay, so. Take a look at this, all right? It starts off as a 2v2. Mystic and Ben, they do not expect the, the drop bear graves to come out of their own jungle and just go past everything. There was actually no vision at all. And this, I mean, this is just... Keen is coming? And he's like, okay, you're gonna back off, right? And he's watching bot lane. So he expects Spirit to back. Spirit doesn't tell him that he's backing. He stays in there tries to fight, so he dies, and then this teleport down on the bottom side at the same time is meant to try to save Mystic from the dive that looked pretty obvious from coming in, so the communications must be everywhere. Ruler gives them the big thumbs down. I think that, uh, you know, that that uh, that idea might be shared amongst many of our viewers at the moment, because Afrika are definitely not playing the way they did in the wild card match, and... I mean, if this is the way you're going to go, Genji are a really good team. I think they are definitely, maybe even at this point, more favor than DRX to make the finals after the way that DRX has been playing late lately. If you're making mistakes like that, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah. You're just going to lose. This isn't really an example of, uh, of Afrika, of Genji winning. This is an example of Afrika losing. <laughs> Afrika are losing this series. It's not like Genji are necessarily yeah. winning it. Yes, they are, you know, taking the opportunities well, but... that Afrika are giving them very, very well, but it's um, certainly feeling like a few unforced errors here. Is Okay, oh. this might be one as well, but this one is in favor of Afrika as PDD dives on forward. Rascal still alive. Keen's going to go down. What? The spear misses. What? Spirit's tilted <laughs> right underneath the turret. Yeah. As now BDD portals around, grabs himself a flash, and Clid's also here. Oh my god. Oh god, this is, uh, I think this might just be a perfect game. Do you think it'll be over before 20 minutes? Uh, I mean, I, I suppose that depends on Afrika, how, how far they want to take this one, you know. Here comes Fly. Who gets a turret Clid. plate. That's, that's yeah, high okay. value. He does have his shockwave available, also both of his summoners, but he's not opting in for anything. As Mystic, Feather Storms, Ruler, relatively low, but now Ben oh, no, is calling. in trouble. Yeah. Okay, the uh, minion did tank up a few of the autos there oh, of Ruler. No. Might have been a misclick, but <laughs> doesn't oh, no, actually no. matter. Ulti comes in, that's a very dead Rakan. Immediately, Rascal just puts them down. The power of the top lane Volley Bear with all that extra money is now Spirit. He's uh, running away. There's just really not very many options for him as the Spear is going to, you know, find the middle and hit Ruler. But there are five members of Gen G on the bottom side of the map. And, uh, yeah, there's nothing that they can really do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Well, yeah, I mean, Spirit comes down here and he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll save the turret. Well, he's yeah. not able to do much against four people. And this play up in the top side, I wonder if we're even going to show a replay because at this point, you know, that TOS joke we always make, I feel like it actually may... Not a joke <laughs> maybe, anymore. Maybe this is the game where it applies because, I mean, take a look at this. So Rascal gets fully baited. I mean, full bait. They got him good. And then BDD misses literally everything, okay? <laughs> and they still couldn't kill Rascal. And both of them die. <laughs> so, yeah. I, they, like, nothing could have gone better for Afrika. Nothing could have gone worse for Genji. And they still got destroyed in, in the 2v2. And then this is going on the bot side at the same time, where it's Ruler and Life just look a, a couple heads above Ben and Mystic today. And then uh, to add insult to injury, Bola Bear's here again. And instantly destroys the Lover's Duo. At least they get to go to the Death Chamber together. That is a nice thing. As Fly, he was down there. He was ready to book it in with the, the, the Command Dissonance. And then instead, he went the hell away from that area, which I do not blame him for at all. BDD has himself a stopwatch now. Also, his lost chapter is completed. We're looking to take down this turret once again. I believe this is uh, about 30 seconds faster than the last time they took the outer turret on the bottom side. So one thing we can say is that Genji have improved. <laughs> I suppose so. Uh, that is one truth here. As the first turret goes down. It's a 5,000 gold lead sub 12 minutes. Yeah. Oh, Spirit hit that spear. Okay. There we go. He's got that going on. The first streak still hasn't been taken, so... And it is Infernal, so you see that Genji are really going to covet this one. They really oh, want to take that one good down. arrow. He's going to split the map, much like Mystic was doing with a lot of his in the previous game. Mystic okay. going to get tagged by the Paddle Star. It does about a trillion damage as the quickness comes down. Blade Caller going to be avoided there by BDD with that stopwatch. It's cleared. Comes in from the back side, but the Zoe's taken down early. The first kill there for Afrika does come in as Rascal. He's... Jumping on forward is this big police officer ready to put everyone oh, in jail. Boy. He does so. And Keen's going to be the last one to go down. Is it, in, it is, in fact, the Graves that's going to do that one. Is now Fly trying to escape. And this cop is mad. You know, these detectives that are just, they're so keen on solving the case. You can see Rascal, he is one of them. Why is he doing this? Oh, he's not going to be able to follow him there. He doesn't have a warrant oh, for the man. for the uh, Nexus and Fountain as of yet, but it's going to take a little while for his department to put that one together. Maybe another seven minutes or something yeah. like that. So, again, I mean, Genji don't need to be do this. They they see Orianna and Renekton coming, by the way. So they've got the top lane coming down, but it's late. And this is a good engage from the side of Afrika. They're just a little bit too far behind. They don't have the items to actually get that damage done. So BDD is the only one who dies. Ruler, once again, just amazing kiting. I mean, this guy, I he's just insane. His mechanics, the way he plays the carry is incredible. And this is just in a casual game, you know, that they're destroying Afrika in game number two. We'll, we'll see how much he's got going. And the best thing about Ruler is that he's always just as good or better when it comes playoff time. So the guy oh, yeah. is just amazing under pressure. As uh, here comes Rascal. Yep, Ulti comes in. He's looking for the solo kill on the Renekton at 13 minutes, which is not something that anyone should be able to do on any champion ever. Uh, however, this uh, Volley Bear is mega fed, 5-0 and 3 now, almost with his uh, Trinity Force completed, but also has uh, the Bramble Vest and the Ninja Tabi, so he's not going to be touched by any of the physical damage coming out of Afrika, and Kane is an example of one of those. Arrow is going to pierce the heavens once again. There are so many arrows well. encircling Rune Terra today. It is just insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the full the zoom, Jonas Strong. I mean, he's not even. He's he still hasn't gone back and bought. I mean, he's been. He's probably got like three thousand gold in his inventory right now. Yep. He's just sitting there dancing in front of Keen. He might like, owe Clid money. Not you know, care. he's on the Mafia Graves. Maybe as Moon at <laughs> the Lone Shark, he needs to actually collect the largest sum so he can pay back the gambling debt. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, B to D. Oh, Shockwave comes in. That's uh, pretty nice. Out of fly. He's gonna get the flash. Yeah. Nimbus Cloak is gonna that's... keep BDD alive as. Oh, Paddle's done. Yeah, he's not gonna go for that one. That's uh, a little bit optimistic. It's part of why the Orianna is pretty decent into the Zoe. You know where she's gonna hop, hop back to, so you get very. Oh, end of the line. Collateral damage gonna be available here, but. 
Clid not going to throw it out just yet. There he goes as the red buff is ticking down. Not going to quite do enough, though, as the Orianna grabs that kill. Stun comes down onto Gene. He's going to die, but we'll see whether they can get anything more as the Grand Entrance and Quickness come forward. Good blade call for the CC as life uh -oh. looks for the Winter's Bite. He'll find it. Oh, my God. The bear is so big. This is 100% Ursa Ring. This is not Teddy Ursa anymore. This Pokemon has evolved, and he looks scary. Dude, this is the bear from the Revenant, you know? Oh God. The the game the the movie where he like mauls Leonardo DiCaprio to, yeah. to almost near to uh, almost death. death. Yeah, this is no spoilers uh, he's just by the way. Here. Oh man, Rascal seven and zero. He's got a Trinity Force. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. Oh uh, well, we're just kind of having fun with this game. Spirit looks for Clid, sees him, goes anyway. <laughs> says, well, uh, you know, I can take this fight. I'm Italy. Clid trying to dodge. Notice how he dodges the W of Oriana. Nearly keeps him alive. Uh, not quite. So they actually lose that one. It does feel like they're limit testing a little bit. They don't need to be doing this, right? No. But they're just they're having fun. They're just going as hard as they possibly can. Great play from life to get the kiting off. And of course, Ruler is going to always make the best of it when you do that for him. And Rascal's like, well, welcome to my world. The scariest bear in the universe. Are we going to have, like, back-to-back -back volley bear POGs? And one of them's the jungler and one of them's the top laner? That might actually happen. I as think he's 7-0-3. So. and three. Yeah. Keep in mind that um, Afrika said, BDD is the problem. Let's spend an extra ban for him and taking his Akali away instead of taking away the volley bear, which we now know two players on the lineup of Genji can play. I think if they don't ban it in game three that uh, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board when it comes to their drafting because... Well, I mean, they get to because yeah. they're, they're going to yeah. be out of playoffs. Uh, at that point, they will be coming back. Uh, they will be our uh, fourth seed, I believe, in uh, the regional gauntlet. Uh, sorry, third seed, sorry. Our fourth seed will be KT. And the other two will be decided in the future based on uh, who's going to be qualifying for world and who's not. As now Rascal's going to get knocked up and uh, is going to have to ult out of there. We'll see whether he actually survives, though, as Clid with the smoke screen trying to help his bear, but he's not going to be able to. That's a big shutdown for Spirit as uh, Shirley comes through and does get a fair bit of damage down onto that inner turret. Now Keen going for the engage. The Zoe is going to go down as well Watch as the, the Rakan. You can see Ruler trying to kite this one out as collateral damage. Looking to try and take down the Crocodile, but he's just got too much health at this point in time. Ruler now trying to kite. The Featherstorm comes in and not going to be enough to kill Ruler just yet. The flash forward Ooh. double kill now for Clid, <laughs> who's playing frontline. The Crab Rave in the middle of the fight as Clid's going to get the... Oh, Oh, no, he's not. No quadra for Clid. <laughs> and Genji might just be able to break the base here. Oh my god. Crab Rave in the middle of a team fight, Ruler, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's just, they're just having so much fun. Our Genji. That's what's going on now. They've got 21 kills in 18 minutes. Uh, thankfully, Afrika have some. It's they're a 9,000 gold lead, sub 20. Oh my god. Yeah. There's only so many numbers that we can mention. You guys can all see it just straight on. This is like... Okay, so first off, Rascal just goes in and eats. He's like, okay, well, I'm really fed. I should be fine. But he went Trinity Force, right? So he's not that tanky. So he goes down relatively fast, you know, four members. And then this is looking like a great engage, right? The burst down onto the Zoe. You take away BDD right away. But then watch Ruler. He's definitely calling for this. As by the way, Ruler gets another kill in live. Uh, yeah. As, so yeah. what? Mm -hmm. And he's walking forward. He's like, yeah, bring it on. And Mystic just uh, a little bit of a fat finger there. Maybe he wanted to get on top of Ruler, but then he immediately died. I don't know that. <laughs> it's yeah. still funny. Yeah. Oh, I don't man. even know what to like. There's no explanation really. And wow. Well, yeah. What, where was the crab wave that time, Rulo? Maybe he feels bad now. Yeah, maybe it's maybe he's like, I, this isn't fun anymore. <laughs> it's too mean now. Yeah, it could this potentially be it. Well, I mean, Ruler oh. is seven zero ten. Um, that's a big score. Uh, PS zero zero fifteen. Um, that's more than double James Bond. Um, like life is the super secret agent. Um reached the next level. Yeah, transcended.
He's transcended MI6. Mm. As a rascal. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit of an emergency here. Siren going off for Mystic. Still able to farm a little bit. Keen with a black cleaver. That's all he has. And BDD and Clid. Just looking to try and take down this turret. Mystic fighting Rascal here. He's going to get himself a bit of a stun. Melee range now as Ulti comes down. Mystic's going to dodge it, but Rascal's just going to eat him. Uh, it was a valiant effort there, my Mystic, I'm not going to lie. But uh, it just was not quite enough uh, to be able to win the fight against the mega-fed top laner that is Rascal. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what else to say. I mean, this is, this is kind of the way that the games in the regular season went for Afrika when they played a top four team. Right? I'm not going to... It's... Dude, no. This is way worse. This is well, way Well, it's worse. worse. So, uh, what and I mean is, like, bad. along the lines, right? Oh. It's along those lines that they yeah, just got yeah, yeah. kind of stomped. This is probably one of the worst stomps, if not the worst, of the season for Afrika. So, it's, it's rough that this is coming to them in the playoffs. Now, we were expecting this as well, even in the wild card, but unfortunately... T1 weren't able to show up at the same level, I suppose. And Afrika were playing, by the way, guys, much better than this. Yes, they And they were. weren't giving free kills in, in level one two games in a row. I mean, this is a different Afrika that we're watching today. And Gen Z are taking full advantage of it. They're just like, okay, I mean, we're in playoff form. You guys clearly right now are not. Well, that's absolutely true. I mean, Mystic played this one out as well as he could, um, but... The shield certainly helping Rascal out there. And then the chomp oh coming off cooldown. He's a big angry boy. 40% cool cooldown reduction already completed. And uh, Righteous Glory has now been put together as well. So the Volley Bear not going to be quite as kiteable at this point in time. Rule is still looking for an Infinity Edge. But should be able to find that one pretty quickly. And he has to put together a Crit Cloak and the recipe. As Drone flies overhead and does find Spirit. It's just a mission to clear out vision. As, uh, oh, oh, I've no. seen this one before. Um, I remember how this movie ends, and it's just like that. But there is a crocodile that's going to turn up, and Rascal's going to stun him and walk away. And that's the strategy. This volley bear is starting to get way too scary. 9, 1, and 4 now. As Ruler going to avoid as much as he can. Can't quite get rid of all of it as BDD chunks out Spirit. Rascal from behind the turret. Gonna get this stun on the fly, but he immediately cleanses. Spirit gonna get flashed after, but he does have a stopwatch as Rascal oh, doesn't right. care about turret damage. It's a double kill for Clid. There's one for Rascal. And I think they might be putting this game to bed right now. Yeah, Ruler giving all of the, the tilty emotes too. I mean, you got a feel for Mystic. Yeah. This is gonna get arrowed here. Featherstorm comes in, but that's only gonna get him as close to his fountain. And two Nexus turrets have been taken down. Life tanking up so much, actually, is now Ruler flashing forward. Ben gonna have to grand exit. And he's uh, looking to exit this game as well as the Nexus is gonna be taken down. And now we're up to match point for Gen G in the time it takes about half a game to be played. Uh, a lot of the time here in the LCK. This has been just an absolute shellacking two games in a row. Yeah, I mean, this does not look like a playoff matchup, to be perfectly honest. This looks like Gen G are fighting Afrika in the regular season, and they got a third shot at them. It's like a, it's like a heavyweight boxer against a, a featherweight right now. I mean, this is, this is one of the biggest stomps we've had in LCK playoff history so far. And we got another game to go, by the way, guys. We we do a best of five, and I was mentioning in game one, I'm like, well, thankfully it's a best of five, so Afrika have a chance to come back. Now I'm like, oh, it feels kind of bad that it's a best of five because that could just happen again yeah. to Afrika. And uh, look, this is a best of five, so theoretically it should be a longer day. I think if Genji do that again, then it'll be a shorter day uh, than the T1 versus Afrika matchup that we had already. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very... It's a weird turn of events. I, uh, I wasn't really... I wasn't expecting a freaking to win, but I was just expecting so much more than this, you know? And uh, it is a bit of a shame that they haven't been able to show up here today. But sometimes, like, I, we were actually having the conversation during that last series, uh, Afrika versus T1. And Afrika, if they're on, if they find momentum, if they find uh, the right mindset in a series, then they look really good. However, if they don't, it has the absolute opposite effect. This is a team that is highly emotional and uh, they can have that momentum, they can move forward or they can tilt 
off the planet, and that is absolutely what they've done by the looks of things uh, so far in this yeah. series. They're gonna they're gonna need something to change uh, in order to uh, get their heads back in this game. I don't know. Something needs to change really quickly, otherwise, um, you know, the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is gonna fall at this point. It can't tilt any farther. It's just going to collapse, and uh, I feel like we are heading down that route. I think that um, two times in a row, Genji got the better of them in the draft, and they just destroyed them in the game at the same time, even with like a, you know, just a decent draft edge. And yeah, it doesn't look like much of a matchup here. So we're hoping that game three is actually somewhat interesting and it's not just another stop. So we we don't have this day just be another 3-0, but uh, I, I can't promise that to you guys. I think the Freak are gonna have to, yeah, you know, they're gonna have to do something drastic to uh, to really maybe maybe we see Jelly in Game Three or something, you know. I think uh, if, if I was a betting man, uh, I'd have to assume that the odds for a Freaker winning a game in this series might be uh, pretty like that. That could get you a lot of money if they do manage to do that uh, for not very yeah. much. Is uh, like my assumption? Fifty and one. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Not exactly a gambling man myself. Um, so I don't necessarily understand how odds work, but yeah, it'd, it'd probably be a, a good bet to take uh, if you knew that it was actually going to happen. Rascal, uh, just going to watch as Keen teleports away from his teammate that was just getting murdered by a bear. And that's sort of one of those telltale signs of, uh, yeah, this went wrong as Ruler getting the uh, auto attack reset. And I mean, Ben had some moments, but unfortunately, not all of them were great. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of moments in this game. Most of them were not good for Afrika. Yeah. Um, I gave my I gave my vote to Ruler. I think that Rascal did a ton in the early game, but the the way that Ruler piloted the Ash here, I think, just straight up deserves. Oh, he was very like, very good. Yeah. It's it's insanity the way he's able to play that carry, and I know that DRX are looking at the series and they're they might be shaking a little bit. Maybe even Dom one. I mean, Dom one are super confident, but the way that Ruler is playing and. The, the way that Genji are just firing on all cylinders right now, it's its a scary thought for any team that might play this team. It's exactly right. And I think even against Darmon, you know, Ruler could be the difference maker. The bottom lane has always been Darmon's weakness. And having that strong carry down there certainly could be a way of uh, toppling them. Definitely getting ahead of ourselves, though, because Genji will need to be able to finish this series off and also take down DRX in order to get to Darmon in that final. That is true. Here's another uh, ruler highlight, essentially, that eventually comes in. It, it's another team fight that looks like a good setup for Afrika, kind of like the one we saw down on the bottom side of the river. And then ruler and Clit and Life are like, oh, you know what, 3v4? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we could probably take him down anyway. And uh, Clit just frontlining <laughs> absolutely perfectly. Ruler uses the minion wave, crab raves a little bit after that flash forward, uh, which seemed like a mistake from Mystic. He may have had a plan, I just don't know what it was, and it uh, definitely uh, didn't work. I wanted to say, like, let's just skip the rest of the highlights, because they're, uh, they're not very flattering to one of our teams here. Thankfully, they skipped a lot of the solo kills that we saw, Yeah, which was also not a great look. But they didn't um, skip the crab rave, which I think was probably the saddest point of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, as, yeah, Ruler did a lot of damage. Once again, the gold graph looks basically the same. Uh, in fact, the graphs across the board looking very similar, but <laughs> Rascal doing yeah. triple the damage of a Renekton, basically, uh, on the Volibear top. It's making me feel like Volibear top's a good champion, and I don't know whether that's necessarily the case, uh, but in this game, it definitely was. So maybe re results-based analysis will come forward, but ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a short break when we get back. Game number three, and we'll see whether Afrika can get back in the series.
off is up here, I'm your eraser In the cut just like a razor, murk up in this world, my place I got all the boys on me, I got all the lines on ring Knock them dead, turning heads, I got all the eyes on me Lady face, card out to the rock, you ain't turn to die Wanna see, my more tajana, ega tajana You like bold, can't leave you the gold, nah nah gee, I know Chumbi hair, cause I like the ball, mom cutie, I know Look at the gold, call it a flex. This is what League of Legends looks like! First blood. Good Lord, man! The dream is alive and well. The crowd erupts.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK 2020 Summer Playoffs. It is round one, our first best of five, and the only reason why Afrika are still here in this particular match. Because, of course, we are down to the wire. <laughs> yeah. This is now a match point for Gen G, and Afrika just don't look like they've turned up today. Yeah, uh, this is not the, the Afrika that we saw on Wednesday. Uh, this doesn't even look like the Afrika that we saw in their matches against top four teams in the regular season. No. Which is, I mean, that's, they did not look good in those games either. So I don't know what has to change. I think they would love to be on blue side this time around. As I was mentioning in the beginning of game two, their strategy of going on to red is a little bit dangerous because if Genji clapped them again, they're just going to pick blue again. And so far, the drafts have gone in Genji's favor. The games have gone in Genji's favor very heavily, of course. And they would have loved to completely switch it up and, you know, go red side, totally different drafts, totally different fields. But games one and two kind of felt like the same thing. And that was kind of just like a landslide or an avalanche or maybe a tornado. <laughs> or maybe it's a typhoon. Maybe it's an example kind of, of what's been happening disaster. here in Korea. As there is ruler eight, zero, and twelve, legendary by the end. CSD at fifteen of thirty-two, just casually, if you don't mind me asking. And uh, yeah, Mystic just did not stand a chance here in this particular game. Started things off looking pretty tilted and finished the game in a very similar state. As Fly tried to go for a Captain Jack cleanse right there, as you saw, and it just didn't quite work out. Which kind of epitomizes this whole series thus far. Yeah, and uh, if you're an 80 carry player, this is what you live for, right? You watch Ruler like this, and you're like, man, this is the dream 80 carry performance and feel, right? Where you're carrying your team, you're kiting everybody down. Ruler, not really one to play, you know, those awesome dudes like we had in the past either. He's just an 80 carries, 80 carry, and he only got four votes <laughs> out of nine. Uh, two went to jungle, one, or no, two went to top, and then one went to support, and then four votes to ruler, so... It feels a little bit like someone just scattered a whole bunch of different tokens around, and then they just, uh, landed on ruler being the player of the game, but... I mean, when you've got a blowout like that, it's really hard to really, uh, give out a player of the game, to be perfectly honest, so... I don't really mind who it goes to. I think Rascal had a great game. But I think also uh, Ruler, like you said, played pretty immaculately. Uh, lots of good to be said for Gen G. Not a lot of good uh, to be said for Afrika. As uh, you can see, there's some uh, certainly some tired boys, but definitely some forlorn faces here as we look in on Afrika. Certainly not having uh, a showing that they've wanted to so far. And let's see whether they can get themselves together as once again, they are going to be on the red side here as we hop into the draft for game number three. Yeah, Genji, if you're them, you just try to do the same thing again, right? There's no reason to switch this up. If, uh, if you're a team that could get wins this easily, then you might as well just go for it. Now, Afrika are probably going to leave set available and maybe try to counterpick with that and uh, try to put one of their bands into something else, maybe like an Ash or a Renekton or something like that. Um, if they just ban set here, I'm like, well, all right, guys, pack it up. Like, <laughs> no, there's the Renekton. Makes sense. Lilia. They elect to take that down. Lilia is available, uh, but set is as well. And now Volibear Lilia could come out, although both of them theoretically are junglers for most teams. I think Lilia is the understandable choice here, as Spirit has certainly already had some good success on it. And uh, this will be a first loss if Afrika don't manage to get themselves back into this series. Uh, assuming that she is going to be locked in. Five seconds to go. I think they're thinking about what to pick next and trying to take as much time as they possibly can, which you could definitely respect. They are yeah. going to lock that one away. I mean, they, they took away their Renekton. That goes very well with the Lilia, so they're going to have to go with something else. And you can see that Lilia currently is 10-0. and zero. Yeah. That is pretty insane. I mean, I don't know if we've had a champion do that that wasn't immediately permabanned. Uh, this might be the first time where it's like one champion just goes on a huge streak and then just, you know, stays available for most pick bands. As Karma is going to be selected here. Yeah, priority picked as well. Very interesting that they didn't decide to uh, opt into an AD Ooh. carry. But there's right. the Evelyn that Clid has already uh, showed us. Looking forward to seeing what he can do. That uh, hate spike cooldown definitely uh, helping out. Uh, buffed in the recent patch. 
And uh, here's the Callista that we've spoken about a lot, but haven't actually seen too much of. But I, f I find it interesting that they're picking Callista potentially into Ash Karma, which is just such a powerful lane as far as control, but they're going to do it anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Mystic just slammed down the Ash. Or if you want to be safe, I guess you could go Ezreal, because Ezreal Karma is also really good, and there's already Callista set down in the bottom side alongside of um, the Evelyn, who can lock you down if you don't have much mobility, like an Ash. But they're hovering yeah. the Ash, and it looks like they do want to go with this pick. It's going to be stronger in the lane against the Callista. And they're just going to hope that with some support, he can stay alive against the many threats on the side of Genji already. Yep, this is a bit of a no-brainer for Afrika. They also don't give away too much of their draft. So now we're looking at solo lanes. Uh, theoretically, of course, Set could be in a solo lane for Genji, so they could ban some supports if they would like to, away from the Callista. But you could imagine that, you know, Callista Set, pretty happy. Mm -hmm. Towards that bottom side, Rika taking some time, and eventually it will be the Zoe taken off the board. And uh, Fly not wanting to pick that one up, which is quite interesting. Uh, we've seen Ash Zoe quite a lot. It has uh, definitely worked, but not this time. Is Jace taken away? Yeah, take some priority picks away from Keen, as Fly hasn't really been too much of a threat in the series so far, whereas Keen has had some decent moments at least. So, chop down his champion pool. We all know that Fly can play a eclectic, you know, yeah. gigantic champion ocean if he wants to. But Silas is actually going to get banned here, which is quite interesting. Yeah, it's strange because, you know, that's expecting something like a cannon pick, potentially. Maybe they want to play Galio? Yes, another choice. I... I I'm curious to see what Afrika are going to go with here. I assume that you pick mid and then save counter pick once you know exactly what the composition of Genji will be for Keen. Or they but just pick Orn. They're going to pick Orn. Okay, well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Orn can be flexed too, but, you know, not, not, not exactly what we were expecting. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm right with you on that one. We'll see what Gen.G are going to lock away, as they do need to finalize their composition now. Five seconds to go in B2D. Thinking about the reverse matchup, but no Zoe available to go into it, as the Orianna will be locked in. And now we have to learn where the set is going. Will it be top lane or support is the big question, and it looks like top lane is going to be the answer, as Pike is hovered at the moment. Definitely a lot of shielding on Afrika's mm. side. The Callista Pantheon would absolutely be a very dangerous choice. This one's more exciting, though, and a lot of magic damage coming out of Gen G. It's going to be all on Ruler to try and get that physical damage down on this Callista. Yeah, and, you know, that's something we usually say with AP junglers, like Evelyn or Karthus or something. You want to, uh, you know, draft as little magic damage alongside of it, but I suppose, as you were mentioning this time, they just want to cut down as much armor as possible and let Ruler carry them. Here's this Galio I was thinking about. They are going to select it here for last. They did not want to get countered by the Silas. It works uh, very well alongside of their composition already. They have huge amounts of engage with the Galio Orn alone, but then you've got the uh, ranged lilting lullabies that can come in from Spirit. Obviously, Ash Arrow can do that job as well. And at least game three does look very different in terms of a pick ban. Yeah, very, very true. So a lot of mix-up. I think Genji have been a little bit more experimental with this particular draft as well. We'll just have to see how it goes. As uh, Set isn't necessarily known for his tank-busting ability, but we have seen a few of these Blade of the Room King varieties uh, come out and do some pretty impressive yeah. things, especially if you uh, think back to Chovy and his performance. It was, of course, into the mid lane, though, and it's not exactly uh, into an Orn, which can just make things a lot less fun for someone that wants to punch things. Orn doesn't get punched very well. Well, taking a look at these compositions, obviously some really nice team fight ability from the side of Afrika. They're really trying to mix it up here and try to change their identity. We see Evelyn once again for Clid. 
and a nice amount of engage on their side as well. Looks a little bit like their game one composition with some pieces slotted out, such as, you know, the Evelyn coming in instead of a Vola Bear and stuff like that, but still a nice amount of engage and some really great team fighting in the mid game. Exactly. Let's do it. Here we are. Game number three. Genji remain on the blue side. And uh, I believe this is actually the first time Clid's played it. I think he hovered it for a long time, and then it was somebody else that actually picked the Evelyn. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Clid is definitely one of our, our EVE enthusiasts. He's been playing a lot of it in solo queue, which is why we've uh, just assumed that he's played it here in the LCK, but hasn't just yet this season. As a Freaker, we're thinking about throwing some gauntlets here on the bottom side. Everything's very, very dark, as we've got a face check into a brush with no one in it. Thanks, Jonas Strong, for keeping up the suspense. Very much appreciate it. Now Freak are just going to get spot. together and walk over a ward. There's the sweeper. Are they just... Are they just going for it? <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? Oh my you goodness. Know, the reinvade from Genji is going to potentially do another game one. <laughs> the thumbs or, up. Uh, minute one victory, rather. Oh, the thumbs up's team. my favorite part. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll see if anyone actually does face check this. It pro oh, Mystic, don't take point. Are they still there? Yes, they are. There's the face breaker. Fly's going to go down for first blood once again. It's before two minutes. All three I games, Valdez. Can we get one game where someone doesn't die before minions even crash? Hi, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even know really what to say. I mean, they're. A freak are just throwing caution to the wind. I thought they would take the time off and try to reset and say, okay, guys, take it slow. We don't want to get it behind again in the early game. Instead, they did the exact opposite. They face-checked a brush with a zero vision that they easily could have been in. And we have another pause. So every game today is going to have a pause and a level one death. And it's certainly a very unique experience, I suppose, Atlas, but it's not... Not a good one. It's not what I wanted to see out of Afrika, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, we often use the word unique. Uh, we use it pretty creatively. As, uh... I'm sorry, uh, production is going to have to repeat that because I was talking over them. It was a Genji ping issue. Aha! Uh -huh. I wonder what that means. Turns out I'm the production after all. Yeah, thanks, Valdez. <laughs> Valdez yeah. of the production team. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what a ping issue is. Yeah. Um... It's, it's one of those arbitrary things where we could be sitting here for 30 minutes or three minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope you've been perhaps wet, wetting your lips, uh, preparing for <laughs> your, your I concert beg your pardon? tonight, Atlas. <laughs> no, uh, definitely not. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> uh, now, uh, now is the time. Should I actually do it? Should I, should I give it a try? Just, like, go for it? Yeah, I don't know whether this is going to work, because it's been a really long time. Remember, I mean, the, the song at this point, came out in the year no 2000. Idea. And uh, I feel like everyone's been waiting. And now we're, yeah. we're going to try and fix a ping issue, so I think maybe it's the time to... You, you need to play some more piano afterwards. It can't just be me. This could go on for a while. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, all right, all right. Let's let... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up real bad, because it has been a really that's long fine. time, but... I messed up a lot too. Okay. There's no judgments here. <laughs> I just, I just don't want to be judged. <laughs> okay, okay, here you go. Ruler he's ruler's going to the bathroom. Okay, we got a lot of time. All right, cool. Yeah. I got that. I can make that sound. <laughs> right, got that one. Okay. All right. Are you preparing? Ah, oh, dang it. All right, we'll have to just go with half the song. <laughs> That's fine. Let's uh, have a look at the replay here. Uh, with Vision, Hello. which is definitely good, with Rascal's voice. Oh, why wasn't he, why wasn't oh, he able to hear it? <laughs> What happened? Wait, what? Did you play it? Yeah, I did. You couldn't I hear it? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> did you mute Discord? No. no. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch the. Uh, if you couldn't hear it, then maybe like. The replay. Then maybe no one could hear it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I was just playing it to myself. I think people could hear it. Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. I man. just maybe maybe something went wrong on my end. I'm not sure. Well, um, but uh, if it was if it happened, it happened. That's good. I'm very I'm very confused. All right, no no no, don't worry, don't worry. The collective you, heard you it. Didn't, the collective you definitely You didn't do it on it. camera though. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even do the whole thing because uh, we were interrupted uh, so rudely <laughs> with something well. else. <laughs> Like a replay of the first, you know, two minutes of this game, which uh, has potentially um, been the final nail for Afrika. Definitely that would have been... Um, it's very early to say that, mm -hmm. but it's not really feeling like Afrika has too much left in the tank. Um, I don't think there's any any harm in saying that Afrika haven't really turned up today, and it's looking like game number three is another example of it. It's just uh, yeah, sad times. just feel that way. Well... I'm looking forward to the recording later on, but I, I did hear the first note. I think. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I how, how did it, how did you stop being able to muted. hear it? Were you like, was your brain like so immediately disgusted that you just automatically <laughs> just muted it without it even knowing? <laughs> yeah, I turned off the. Well, I mean, I was able to hear the game sounds and the background music, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe next time. Maybe your VLC is like extraordinarily loud, or something like that. No. No. <laughs> um, All I'm the trying... sounds are are balanced for the cast, you know. But uh... although we hear Discord, remember, and yeah. we get to control the production sound, so maybe you, you've just got the production sound up really high and Discord down really low. Perhaps no, no. Okay, no. Well, I, was, <laughs> I have no idea. I was trying to. I was fine. trying to offer you some. Uh, I was trying to offer some uh, some reasoning as to why everything yeah. was going wrong. Um, but I mean, I think we've been trying to offer reasoning as to why things have been going wrong this entire broadcast. <laughs> this, like, that's, that's been the just, whole thing. <laughs> that's what we've been doing. That's our job. Oh. I don't know whether we've nailed it, uh, but we've given it a red hot crack. Um, and we've also <laughs> been messing up musical instruments. Uh, my, my cats yeah, haven't great. even turned up. I don't even want to be a part of this one. Uh, your your cat was <laughs> had a bit of a a bit of a problem with being on the show as well earlier yeah, on. She was a little bit camera shy. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm trying. Do you know what I'm trying to work out? I'm trying to work out what the song was in uh, in the movie, the Pokemon movie 2000 Lugia song. Was it to like summon Lugia or something? I'm like trying to remember. I don't remember much about the movie. I remember some scenes, you know. I guess I was pretty young. I was nine, so you were probably like twenty-eight at that point. Yeah, no, I, I thirty-five. Um, <laughs> I think. Yeah. I think that was just yeah. after I'd had my fifth child. Um, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah, George, of course. That was Courtney. My God, you've met my family, uh, Valdez. You've got to stop. Oh, I thought that was your fourth child. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't have any kids, by the way, guys. That was Valdez making a joke about how old I am, which is not very yeah, nice. You know what? My true. little sister turned 30 yesterday. Wow. Yeah, so I was already feeling really old, Valdez. That's true. How dare you? I guess... I'm just being mean. I'm, I'm not even 30 yet. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Soon, soon. We're, I'm going to stay there. 30 for the next... Uh, next year. 50 years. It's coming up next year. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we're only like we're only three years apart or something, right? It's uh, it's not as much uh, of a, a difference as sometimes I think it is. Are you 80, 88? Or I am 88. 88, right? Okay, 88. indeed, indeed. Well, I'm 91, so 91. Three years apart. What what year is that? For, um, the, the Chinese animals or whatever. Oh, I'm a sheep. You're a sheep. I'm a yeah. dragon. I'm at, <laughs> yeah, based on how to train your dragon. I theor my 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 the key thing in my diet is you, because they eat sheep that. all the time in that movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Well, I I hope you don't get any ideas because I don't know whether that makes us made to be friends or not at all. For, yeah. You probably <laughs> something along those lines for sure. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like something's gone wrong with this conversation. They've let us yeah, go for no, too I, long. This I ping think... issue, man. It, it really has lost <laughs> yeah, a while. Yeah, about the ping. What, let's talk about internet. No, actually, let's not. Um, there is a typhoon going on, though. Yeah. I guess, at the same time. So maybe that's the issue. And they already had but... one pause uh, that was based on the internet. And so you could imagine that if they're getting a bit of lag, it has a, you know, a similar origin. Yeah. Hmm. Well... 
I'm trying to remember whether there were any other songs that I used to know how to play. I used to know how to play like the Zelda songs as well. You didn't, but I can't. Didn't I can't find. Play... I can't find the tabs for those. What about Yakety Sax? <laughs> Yak yeah, Yakety Sax. I um. You didn't. You didn't learn how to play that during the break. Yeah. I, no. Yakety Sax for Ocarina. <laughs> no, I haven't. Haven't quite learned that one. Um. Oh, I did learn a. I learned a Lord of the Rings song. Whoa. But I don't. I don't remember. Like it was like the Fellowship of the Ring theme song. Uh, mm -hmm. thingy. I learned it because my dad my dad's not very good at watching movies uh, especially not like fantasy or anything like that. Like he's the kind of guy that instead of reading fiction would read like the textbook to something you know or the instructions. Like he just doesn't okay. really like utilizing his imagination all that much. Um, mm -hmm. And so like he'd listen to my mom and I watching Lord of the Rings and you know it's like the, the movies last four billion years and my dad's like the entire time they're just playing this da -da 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 -da, and it's really annoying. And so I learned the song <laughs> on my ocarina so I could walk around the house playing it even when we weren't watching the movie. Um, I was a great son, uh, loved I'm guessing by it's, my family a lot. I'm guessing it's not originally for the ocarina. <laughs> no, 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 I think it's for a, a huge orchestra and it's a beautiful piece of music. Um, not one that I really want to sully. Uh, here on this broadcast, and also not one that I've played for like 15 years. It's been a really long time. I can, I can only imagine that song on the ocarina. <laughs> it's probably sound. Oh no no no, no 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 no! It wasn't that song. It was the Hobbit song, and that Hobbit song, like oh, that that song is it's played on a flute, I think. And so that one would oh, work. Well, in that case, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't quite remember how it goes. But like it's like do 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 that one, you know. Do, 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 yeah, no, I, do, 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 I. That is do, one do. of the few movies I have watched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've watched that one. Yeah, I saw it once. Uh, um, it now I want to try and wing it, I but I think it. it's just going to be really, really, really bad. And so I don't think yeah. we will. I was thinking about winging Yakety Sax for the piano, but I don't think that's you, you a good play, idea. You played a little bit of something like it uh, the other day. Did I? Yeah, I think so. I think it's in there. The other I think it's day. in your brain somewhere. I think so. What do you mean the other day? I don't know. You, oh, you, like, you, uh, you, you were just it? you were just mucking around on the piano the other day. I think we were casting together or something. Oh, was I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Maybe you have it in your brain. You've forgotten. You don't even know. You don't even know all of this talent that's Maybe lying underneath the that. surface, Brendan. Maybe what happened when you were playing Ocarina is what happened during that time. I just blocked it out because it was. <laughs> yeah. It was. Yeah. It wasn't. You know. It just wasn't up, up to up to your a standard. Standard. Yeah. Yeah. You are a bit of a perfectionist. Brendan, you definitely a little are. bit. Yep, you do. A little bit, yeah. You do like to excel or rage quit. That is, uh, mm. it's definitely the Brendan way. It's true. I think it's, like, it's that's an admirable trait, but it must be frustrating sometimes. It's frustrating. It is. Um, but you know, I suppose it works sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm the opposite. I'm dedicated to mediocrity. That's what I really oh. like. <laughs> great yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dedicate or no not great okay <laughs> yeah it is it is okay yeah. i like yeah. uh, just i value the jack of all trades i've just ignored the master True. of none part you know i'm just just yeah. not going to think about that bit because ignorance so, is bliss i remember when crumbs was here we were actually seriously considering the lck band the lck band oh yeah <laughs> and that was back when uh Achilles was casting for OGN, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he was, was he going to be on vocals? In 2017? Yeah, he was going to be vocals, because he's got the best voice. Yep. And and also the most enthusiastic at karaoke. Instruments? Beg your pardon? Sure. Uh, oh, I'm he just... plays Guitar Hero. Yeah, yeah that's true. I, I think know he that. played guitar back in the day. Yeah. But now he's a Guitar Hero. <laughs> Or well, maybe he could so play air guitar. I think uh, I think Crumbs is gonna play drums. Crumbs on the drums. <laughs> yeah. And I was gonna play ocarina in our band. <laughs> <laughs> Great band. And it was gonna not be lame at all. All the yeah, <laughs> all the classic instruments that you would normally find. With the, yeah, in a rock band. band. It's a rock band. In a quartet. Band. Yeah. Hey, but you know, like, well, you can you can have all sorts of instruments in all sorts true. of bands. You know, you wouldn't expect punk rock music to have violins, but Yellowcard did it, and it was pretty cool. That's true. They all, didn't they also have like a? Uh, there, there was another band that had like a DJ. Lincoln Park. What was that one? Lincoln Park had it, but there was another one I was thinking of. But Incubus. Uh, yeah, Incubus. That's the Hell yeah. Okay. There you go. Love that band. Well, actually. we have League of Legends to talk about, Atlas, as it has rudely interrupted our podcast. Yeah, we're back. B um, by the way, 
it's the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, true. We're, we're only three minutes in. Nothing's really happened. We've just been laning. Uh, there has been a first blood. Um, we're going to try and ignore that at this stage, as Mystic and Ben actually doing a pretty good job shoving this wave in on the bottom side. Uh, BDD also shoving in the Galio in mid lane, as you would expect, is cleared. He's going to make his way around. We'll find Spirit, but he's just going to smite that one away and uh, skip out of the jungle. Lilia yeah, just a little bit too fast for bootless Evelyn at this point in the game, so Khalid smartly doesn't go for any kind of flash play or anything like that. Because probably eventually Spirit would just run away from him. Yeah. Um, even if he did get a charm. As <laughs> we've, we've all experienced the Scuttle Crab and his moving. His juking it ability. Is incredible. As, okay, yeah. Taunt going to come through onto BDD, but now Fly's in trouble and he's just ignoring Spirit as BDD flashes on in, is going to be able to grab that kill. Now BDD trying to get on out of there. He has the potion running. The hate spikes are coming out. BDD, one more auto and he'll go down, but it is a trade. And that's going to be well and truly in favor of Gen G. Now tethered up his ruler, but immediately he cleanses. And Ben is going to get out of there as uh, it's pretty even on the bottom side all things considered yeah just a bit of trading you know of course the Kalista is going to have a little bit of a hard time early on in the game against the range advantage of course especially with his uh, melee support Gragas does a little bit of poke but nothing compared to Karma, as Weird. here's Evelyn again. Yeah, he's going to be able to get that charm down. That is a super dead Why didn't he flash? Yeah, he didn't have I, time. Well, he knows when the charm is going to reach completion. You just Well, flash yeah, that's right. probably a good point. <laughs> probably should have done that. You just got to flash then. I mean, you have to know that life has... Oh, he might even... Oh. <laughs> Oh no. Okay. Oh, uh, oh god. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, he, well, I mean, is it inting <laughs> when you get executed? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh uh, boy. Well, <laughs> thankfully Spirit's there to get the, to get the minions, otherwise that would be very awkward in the bottom lane. Uh, well. What's that song from the Titanic called? It's got that. My the heart famous, will go yeah, on. Yeah, my heart will go on. You know how that's the recorder version, and it's a bit of a meme. <laughs> I need to play that on the ocarina. Yeah, I feel like that's about as that. good as Yakety Sax for this particular it's game. It's kind of how the series is going. It's like <laughs> we yeah. have League of Legends, and then we have the series, and that's the recorder version. <laughs> yeah. of my heart will go on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's perfect. Some good yeah. has come out of this, 100. percent As I well, yeah, let's um. Thanks, Jonas Strong. Thanks for, for giving us this particular... Thing is, I don't think Ruler was expecting... Um, <laughs> yeah, the turret aggro. He, he died, I guess, before the last stick hit the Karma, so he got the level up, and that's what kept him alive? That's what it looked like. Um, <laughs> just the craziest... Uh, the, just the weirdest stuff has already happened in this game. Well, speaking of weird stuff, Mystic is just going to die here on the bottom side. He uh, does flash and heal. And there is a snare on to Ruler, so he's going to get taken down relatively low. Teleport coming on in from uh, almost everyone. As Keen's going to make oh. his way down. That's a great body slam, but life is still going to be dead. Oh. Ironically or not. And Ruler's just going to get to work trying to clear out this minion wave before he's potentially dove by three members of a Afrika. Yeah, we got Evelyn coming bot and some low health bars, so I, I think Afrika probably going to take the safe play in this case. And Keen has been doing a good job this game. It seems like he's finally angry. He's gone over the edge, and now he's doing a great job on the top side. Gets a good teleport down here. And they trade the flash for this and the heal. Mystic has to use both. No summoners used here by Genji. And again, they're just trying to flex a little bit, right? They have no summoners at all. They know that Keen has teleport and that this kind of a play is possible. They just did not factor it in. They thought 100% they would get the Ash. Did not happen. And they did get punished for it. But at least only life did die. As we're taking a look at some Lilia stats here, you see that Pyoshik has played it the most by far. But Spirit is number two. He's got two wins on that one. So looking for his third here in game number three. Yeah, he's actually uh, done very, very well on the Lilia. was one of the first adoptees of this particular champion. Definitely had some very good performances as our life down here. Once again, the hillbilly. 
as... Oh, that's a good face breaker onto Keen. I believe that was to interrupt a Searing Charge as well. So, good trade from Rascal. He's got himself just some Merc Treads. They're up towards the top side. As Callista will make her way back into this lane. Still ahead by a couple of CS with a minion wave stacking up against her. So, not worried at all about how this game is going. But they are only ahead by 600 gold this time. And I actually think this is the smallest gold lead that Gen.G have had at eight minutes this entire series. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is basically uh, close. It certainly feels closer than the other games. But here comes Clit. He's level six. And Orn has Flash. Uh, but he's very far up the lane. Let's see yeah. how long Clit is going to hold on to that one. Hate Spike comes down, gets to the minion wave. The ulti is going to be there. But that cooldown of the Hate Spike actually working out quite nicely, but not able to actually kill. But Keen does have to use his Flash. So next time, the Evelyn is probably going to kill him. Yeah, and the Evelyn can be really annoying like that, especially if you don't have forward vision to see where she is, like on her camps and stuff, which is normally what you would like to do against an Evelyn. But because Afrika are behind, they will not have that opportunity. Gen G, this looks more like a normal game now, right? Where the team that's slightly ahead goes for the Rift Herald and gets challenged a bit by Afrika. We'll see what they can do. Yep, Kane has his ulti available. Fly. Able to get on top of him as well if Kane does get into an unfortunate position. They can actually grab the aggro on this Rift Herald. It is going to be a 50-50 as there's a shockwave from BDD. Showstopper comes on down. We'll see who actually manages to get the Rift Herald. It will be set somehow. He picks up a double, actually, if you include Rift Herald as a champion. Lilia going to fall down. Fly chasing after Clint. Some low health bars. But now Fly has to get out of there. Not going to be able to go one versus three. Is now Ben's going to get chunked. As Ruler wants to actually be able to offer some damage back, but he's not actually able to really. Mostly contending with a minion wave, but that's a big win for Gen.G. Absolutely. It was looking like a little bit of a normal fight in Afrika. They forced it a little bit too hard, and they weren't even able to pick up the Rift Herald after all of that. So, once again, the Genji effect coming in here. They take the Rift Herald and two kills on top of it. I liked their target selection. I do think that Spirit did just about everything he possibly could have to try to get out of that assassination attempt by all three members of Gen G. Yes, here we go. Yeah, that's going to be a great cast back. Mystic well and truly dead. They got that flash from earlier. Ben now has his available, and so Ruler probably doesn't want to go too aggressive. But, uh, okay, I spoke too soon when it came to that, uh, that gold advantage. It's now ballooned to 2.5 thousand. And Afrika once again just not able to get anything done in this series. We're going to have a look at Gen G. Locking down Spirit there with a pretty nice shockwave as Rascal getting in there with a set that does a lot more with uh, all the extra resources of a top laner. Yeah, it was pretty much just use everything on the squishy deer. <laughs> Find Bambi and kill her, essentially. And, yeah. of course, this early on, she has basically zero health, so... Nice job by Spirit to live for a long time. You saw that the magic shield was brought in by Fly at the same time with his ultimate, but it just wasn't enough, and Set is so good at uh, skirmishing this early on in the game. Like, when, you know, people don't have many uh, stats, he's able to use that grit very effectively and uh, just does a great job. Has the Conqueror ticking at the same time. Incredibly hard to kill him, and the Freak were trying to do that. Not quite able to do so. And Genji were already ahead, so again, the, the decision to try to force the 3v3 was a little bit confusing at the same time, but definitely could have turned out differently. Still, Genji get a nice little lead from this. They're going to get the Ocean Drake as well. Mountain on the way afterwards. And with this Rift Herald, Clid will be looking for a play. Yeah, it does, of course, uh, have the stealth now at level 8. BDD comes on over, does manage to catch Mystic oh. with the Shockwave, but he's pulled into the wall. As our ruler now with a very fast cleanse. Oh, that's a great knockup. Ben is going to be taken down. That's going to be the ulti out of Clid. Fly does pick one up onto the Callista, but now there's four members of Genji very angry that their AD carry has been taken down. Okay, sleep comes through as Spirit will join the fray. But there are still four members of Genji. Only two of a freaker is now Rascal. Down to about 400, and that is going to be a super dead Lilia. I don't even know. Uh, in goes what Fly. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, look, that was a cool circle, but he gets his face broken and sent to the death chamber himself. Some good juggling there from Genji, but uh, not exactly the greatest decision making from a freaker. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that their 
their play to go for the dive, and they weren't even able to get the Galio after all that, as now TP it is going to come goes. in. Yeah, Rascal, I think he's just going just gonna to have to give himself up here. Good face breaker before he goes out, but he's well and fully dead. So they do manage to uh, capitalize on the teleport from Kane. Yeah, that they do. And the dive was like, okay, well, you didn't get the kill. And, okay, we're going to start all the way from the beginning. So Mystic, he walks out from behind the minions, which gives life the free engage here. It's Flash, Gragas with ult versus no Flash, Ash. You cannot be there. You will die. And that is what happened. Uh, Mystic gets a little bit lucky that he doesn't get pulled in so much there, but still goes down. And it's just a massacre down in the bottom side. Not much to say there, but here is where it gets interesting because Fly gets the kill. And you're thinking, okay, they're going to get the dive and they're probably going to kill Fly too. But then they actually don't fully commit because the Lilting Lullaby is really nice from Spirit, actually, to sleep the two of them. And then Spirit's in a terrible spot. And then Fly goes back in. The perfect task actually to knock him off filter there is what helped out. There's there. the on horn as they're focusing on to ruler. Life survives for quite some time as ruler's trying to hop out of this one, but he's not going to be able to. Great arrow is going to be picked up by the Callista right after the cleanse. BDD, not anything that he can actually offer. As Clid's going to get tagged by a volley. There are five members of a Freaka in this area. As Clid should be taken. That's a two man shockwave. Keen in trouble. Clid eventually is going to go down. Now, BDD, one versus four. Not entirely sure what he can do here. Is Lilting Lullaby going to come through yet again? But Cleanse is going to be good, and the volley is actually going to be blocked by the minion wave. Fly going to be able to take down BDD as a tower kills the set elsewhere on this map. Not entirely sure what happened there. Oh no, set killed a tower. Sorry, this game has been very strange. <laughs> I assume some weird things. So he's able to take down that top lane outer. But uh, this game is certainly very, very strange. Uh, Valdez, why don't you break it down for us? Yeah. Well, we talked about the drafts. We said Afrika have some pretty insane engage, and they show it off here. They finally look angry enough to do something very proactive and aggressive. They use their composition. They get that great dive going. And it was essentially 5v3. BDD gets here late. And there's actually a really good overall play for Afrika, even though Keen does go down. As you can see in live, Lilia will survive. But Cleanse even have to be forced out here by the Lilithing Lullaby by Spirit. Good job there. Trade kill here. He didn't have to go for that, but it actually is good because you get 600 gold for the 300. So overall, you gain profit for your team. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it just feels really like the first time that Afrika have done much of anything in this series. Oh, Fly oh, almost had his Justice Punch blocked there. That may have been his death was still under a turret, and remember it's 15 and a half minutes, well 16 minutes, so still very early days. Still a big lead for Gen.G, but Afrika have shown that they can at least tango with Gen.G at this point. Life waiting in the wings, no flash still for Mystic, but he does have the heal for a little bit of extra movement speed. And Hawkshot is going to spot Life, and the hillbilly is just going to wander back towards this mid lane. Ruler heading towards bottom side. As Fly is the one down there, pushing the minion wave forward. And uh, possibly a face check, but uh, Ruler probably not going to be able to quite 1v1 the Galio just yet, especially with the Proto Belt now completed. Alright, Ben, not going to find the Q. Let's see whether Clid can uh, find a few extra kills. 2, 1, and 6 now. He's got himself a Sheen. I don't know what the uh, Ruby Crystal's quite doing. Sheen wants to be the Lich Bane for his second item. Uh-huh. Notice no Hex Flash here from Rascal. He's not able to use that wall to actually get over. Well, trying to take a trade breaker. here. Yep. Mystic going to heal. I think getting out of the way of a potential shock uh, shockwave. Yeah. But uh, didn't ever actually come through. Watch the ball. As uh, Spirit going to find the bowling variety. As you can see now, Genji just trying to get positioned around this dragon, which is going to be their next priority. Outer turret is going to stay alive here for Afrika in the mid lane. That could actually be important for dealing with this sort of ARAM that we do have going on right now. You can see very passive 
positioning now from Afrika from behind. Doesn't look like they really want to challenge the Ooh. mountain. We're going to turn it around, though. Maybe not. Yeah, not, not going to land on to beat it either, as you can see the ball. Is the shockwave actually going to come through? Dissonance tries to get some work done there. Is okay. Rascal is going to find Fly, who survives barely by the skin of his teeth. And now doesn't have teleport and doesn't have heroic entrance in order to get towards any dragon fight. And Clit is going to waste no time. He's already down there. Try and lock that one down. And can Ruler also get some damage on this turret? I think the answer is going to be no. As two versus three, not going to be able to get there. And there goes the Drake Cloud Soul. This game is, you know, it's suboptimal, but it's fine. What do these players do? Oh, like? oh God. <laughs> Pause number four. <laughs> Maybe some more ping issues here. Because it doesn't look like uh, Genji are playing with uh, inflated ping, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's looking like they're playing pretty well. Certainly maybe well, some uh, extra yeah. exuberance that they didn't necessarily need, but that's fine. Now I get to we, show you uh, whether or not I've uh, taught myself how to play the, the My Heart Will Go On. And I think that's probably <laughs> the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's really all that matters, actually. Um, can you just talk to chat for, for a right sec? Now. I'm just gonna I'm just going to practice just a little bit. Sure, just yeah. Just to make sure ahead. I know where it starts. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's up, chat? How's it going? We are, uh, we're here in pause four. I feel like it's, it's like a little intermission time when we have League of Legends in between our concerts that we're putting on <laughs> during the breaks. As, uh, Atlas isn't on screen right now, but I would have loved to see him practicing with no sound <laughs> to get a yeah. better idea of how it's going, but... I, I, do you want me to do you want me to show you how far I've got? Yeah, this is sure. um, this is just a it's 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 a learning experience for all of us because there has been a lot of pauses and we may as well do something with it. Um, okay, so here he, sure. here goes here goes. Uh, this is a really tough song, so I I, I, I'm gonna need time. I'm gonna need everyone to be really <laughs> impressed. So just give me a sec. Is it? Is it going? <laughs> I can't do that last bit. But it was Did fun. you? Yeah, I was playing Did you do it because I, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> why? Why? Why can't you really hear? Why can't you hear my voice and you why. can't hear that? I, I just turned on the stream though to take a look at your bright blue ocarina. That I just it looks saw. a bit like the ocarina of time, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. It's not actually it's any true. any affiliation with Nintendo at all. Um, That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not able yeah, to hear well, I, it. Maybe I, it's like a mic thing. Like for some reason, Discord doesn't pick up the. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's like too high pitched or like too quiet or something. Maybe the gate Otherwise, on the gate on Discord might be different from the gate on. Uh, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be the pickup, wouldn't sense. it? Yeah, that that, that would make sense. sense. Well, I mean, well, you're just gonna great. have to you're gonna have to watch the vod, and now I get no <laughs> instant feedback at all. And I wanted, I mean, to be honest, the 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 crescendo part don't really have that nailed yet. Don't quite know where the notes are. Um, but the start, I feel like I really, really dominated that bit. Really, de really just <laughs> dominated it. As we yeah, are going to well, be resuming the game, so that is okay. uh, that's going to be no sure, more music lesson uh, for I'm Atlas. sure it was as beautiful as the original. I uh, um, my well, heart will go on on recorder. Thank you very much, Valdez. Which I, I appreciate which I watch that. All I appreciate the time. that you're doing that out of faith as well. You know, just <laughs> just shows. Uh, how much you, you value our, our friendship is. Here we are, back into the game once again. Yeah, we didn't actually hear this time what the issue was, I don't, I don't believe. Um, but, I mean, whatever, at least it was <laughs> short, so... Uh, yeah, it was uh, a, a freak -a ping issue this time. Okay. So, it's just, there you uh, go. I think the internet is actually a little bit weird today. Uh, that might be what the problem is, uh, just uh, given the weather and things like that here in yeah. Seoul. It's really windy, like, you know, a yeah. typhoon would be, so I guess that's the issue. Yeah, we have a bit of a fight here towards the bottom side as Rascal with his Blade of the Ruin King completed. This is the build that we were expecting out of the set, likely to go into a Black Cleaver as item number two. BDD has Seraphs and Void Staff already completed. 
as the Orianna is pretty happy at this stage. Five, two, and five. Ten of the thirteen kills he's participated in thus far. And uh, definitely an accelerated uh, Orianna, which is a scary prospect, actually. I feel like a, a snowballed Orianna is a, is a frightening thing. Because normally yeah. she just does nothing until, like, mega late game where she's really scary. If she gets accelerated, then she starts to chunk you. And, uh, you know, that's keen with some magic resist. And already unable to really tangle t tango too much with, uh, with B to D. Ben trying his best yeah. to clear out vision. Really do like that itemization from BDD. We'll see what he does go into here. If he goes for another defensive item, such as a Zonias or something like that, with all of the Harding Gates that they have, or if he just goes straight Death Cap and tries to uh, stack up as much AP, because that's kind of the idea, especially when you go Seraphs instead of Ludens, um, that you're trying to get as much AP as possible so that not only your damage is really high, but your shields also get the effect yep. of all the extra AP. Double so, dipping, as it were. Yes, wow. Absolutely. That's why flat he, AP is so good on these utility champions. That's why he plays Akali, maybe. Mm. Clid is, is hanging out. I like that they know that they can't see him. Because there's a control <laughs> ward right there. Yeah. But he is going to be able to take down this ward here. And uh, Mystic, you know, all he can really have is popcorn chicken. And yes, it might be delicious, but it's just not that good for you. Gonna need some of these good uh, good minions here in the mid lane. He is at least going yeah. to have them thrown at him because, of course, we're in the LCK. We like to play some ping pong, and that's what we're going to be doing. Two minutes until the Cloud Drake. That will be Soul Point available for Gen G. As Black Cleave is actually completely done uh, for the set. Yeah, that's a, a really obnoxious build against a couple of tanks, right? You uh, got the Blade of the Rune King, and of course, you're chipping away at the armor with the Black. Cleaver. You do have a lot of AP on your team, so the Black Cleaver is kind of interesting, but I mean, you're set, you're attacking a lot, so, and you're going up against a lot of tanks in the front line, so I, I guess we can give him the benefit of the doubt there as Clid. He's just waiting for Mystic to step out, but Mystic this time around, game three, he realizes I can't just walk down lanes. I have to be re. Oh, oh, oh no. Don't do it, Mystic. Stick next to your control wards, they are your friends. I'm frightened. No. I'm really frightened. No. <laughs> Not like this. Well, Callista's gonna come back. And uh, we'll probably just push the wave in. Uh. Oh, Mystic. Don't do it. Don't walk away from that turret. He uh. could probably... That's oh. so close. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so frightened. Turn the vision back on. Turn the vision back on. <laughs> I'm too scared. I'm yeah. too scared, Jonas Strong. Was that, was that her? Oh, no. I, I don't think yeah, they saw is. her. I think only life and ruler revealed themselves, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, some control wards here, so not going to be able to enter that brush. Mm -hmm. uh, is Clid. As Dongchol. You, you can't scratch my, my LCK jacket. It's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll have some dinner later. It's okay. I apologize, everyone. He's sitting here on the desk. Mm -hmm. But no camera, so it's no. just... It, it's Rengar and Stealth for now. He is. Uh, which yeah. is actually is uh, pretty on point, uh, because of course Clid is there as uh, mm -hmm. this Evelyn. Fly is just split pushing top. He has TP, so Ooh. if anything happens here, you see that Keen is going to use his ultimate to try to clear the wave. The ruler doesn't seem to care too much. Not a lot of wave clear, but Keen has hit level 13, so these ornaments are starting to come in. Already has the Abyssal Mask as well as the Forge Fire Cape. And so we'll soon be able to give that Might the Ruin King over to Mystic. Hopefully Fly builds something other than a Luden's Echo, because uh, Luden's Pulse just not as good as uh, some of the alternatives for a uh, AP carry. That is going to be Gen G taking that soul point like we were talking about. And Afrika just wanting to bide their time. Still big leads uh, in almost every lane, in fact in every lane. Mm -hmm. Apart from support. Even support. 85 gold. 85 <laughs> whole golds! The difference there as, okay. Well, that's not really going to work out. They're trying to keep their control words up, of course, because vision is so important. With the Evelyn especially. And even though this one doesn't look like games one and two, and it's not as obvious where, you know, 
you could bring your, your dad over and say, hey, look, which team is winning? And he'd be like, okay, that team. This is a little bit slower and more calculated, but it's still very one-sided, right? It's a little bit less obvious, but Gen G are getting everything. They're getting so much farm, even some of the camps in Afrika's jungle. They're getting all the drakes. They're already really far ahead, and their comp is going to scale really well. I mean, Afrika's, Afrika's going to scale one. well also. They do have Ornn, they've got Ash, who scales quite well. Uh, into the later yeah. stages of the game. Lilia also yeah. is a very big damage dealer, so I don't think Afrika are too worried about uh, late game, but I think you're right. I think Gen.G aren't really too phased about that either. Orianna, of course, a very big scaling champion, and uh, Evelyn just does a massive burst, and so maybe the Ash isn't even something that anyone worries about. The Spirit can possibly uh, put Ruler to sleep, but isn't going to choose to. Okay, okay, yeah, fly, yeah. looking for well. something. Justice Punch not going to connect there as Keen. Not even going to throw back the Ornhorn. Two-man shockwave onto the tanky boys of Afrika as life gets a body slam. There's the teleport in, though. A showstopper. Rascal picks off Spirit, but he is going to be able to escape. Not many flashes left remaining on Afrika's side as now Keen trying to escape, and he will do so. But Clit gets in from the side. The hate spike's coming down. Oh. Ulti, not enough to actually execute Afrika. As the bowling ball goes back in, turret going to be taken down. Taunt only onto Rascal, and he's a pretty tanky boy. Is now life looking for more flies. Going to go Golden Spirit spinning around, but Clit is finally going to put him down. Four dead in the blink of an eye as Keen comes in. He just wants the one kill. The Gragas is going to go down, but is it going to be the ace here for Gen G? As Ruler Aww. should be able to get some more. Sticks into Keen, the face breaker at max range. And there's the ace. And that'll be the Baron, and that may just be the series here for Gen.G. Yeah, Afrika seems to have this issue where the second the team fight turns a little bit in their favor, they're like, we're just gonna go for it. Great cast here, by the way, by life. Denies that follow-up engage onto Ruler, who had both of his summoners down. And you can see that even though things are looking pretty good for Gen.G, they don't actually get any kills. And then eventually the Evelyn is going to come across here and get exhausted, which is a, a great play by Ben. Immediately gets this exhaust down, knowing what's coming. And then the teleport comes in, and you're thinking, oh, maybe they could turn this around. But then the turret goes down, they go so far down the lane, it's almost like they forgot that Evelyn is full health and right in your back line, and you're really far ahead. Like, you can't be forcing fights in this kind of a scenario, but they do it anyway. And this is not the first time in the series that they've done exactly that, so... Seems yeah. to be a little bit, bit of an issue for Afrika. And all of a sudden... They struggle playing from behind. All of a sudden, it's an 8,000 gold lead as well, Valdez. It's, uh, it was yeah. far closer than our other games. Um, it feels like Afrika weren't able to temper it enough. His life is going to be spotted there by Spirit. Falling ball going to miss. It's cleared waiting off to the side. Doesn't care about these uh, regular wards. Let's see whether the he can actually get any one shots. <laughs> okay, there's the call of the Forge God. Ruler going to avoid the knockups as uh, Arrow going to connect this time, and there's no cleanse. He is exceptionally dead. BDD gets a three man shockwave, but there's no follow up. Rascal trying to come on in there. That's a good control ward to understand exactly where everyone is, but Rascal still wants it. Two man face breaker, heroic entrance, immediately oh. going to be interrupted <laughs> as Fly gets a justice punch over, wants to try and find BDD. But meanwhile, Keen is just going to get crushed by all the CC out of Rascal and Spirit not quite doing enough damage this time around. And you can see the Galio is still going to fall down to the Orianna anyway. Haymaker comes on in. Spirit's going to get lit on fire. And Ben underneath the turret is this time going to get executed. And Spirit, yes, you can wave your wizard wand around, but all of your friends are dead. And your in inner turret in mid lane is also going to go down. Cleared. Probably oh. he may fall, but does have a stopwatch. B to D, command protect. Does oh. No, bowling ball. <laughs> going to connect. Life wants to try and take down Spirit, but... All right, he does have it. Body slam going to come in, and the Lilia does take a couple with her, but otherwise it is going to be entirely the advantage of Gen G. We move towards a 10,000 gold lead at 28 minutes, but the game made it to 28 minutes, Valdez. Yeah, there's progress here for a free guy, I suppose. Ruler, he fails his dash over the wall, and it's a little bit sad. So, Ruler doesn't have flash and cleanse. 
and they say, we have a ton of engage, so let's just go straight onto the Callista who is by himself. So that's a little bit of a whoopsie from Ruler, gets caught out. Notice how Genji are like, we don't care, we're just going to fight 4v5. They don't have to do this, but they decide to, as Rascal does, look at these chunks. Okay, he has the magic shield, right? It doesn't go, it doesn't hit that at all. So we're just chunking for like 25% of Callista's health with every set auto. So immediately they lose their 80 carry, BD easily wins the 1v1, and then the 3 on 2 up here. Rascal makes it a little bit interesting, and in the end Spirit gets some revenge, but that's about it. It's still pretty bad feels for the side of Afrika, and you can see that actually it is Clid that does go down. Yeah, love the bowling ball out of Spirit. Lobs it nice. over life. Perfect. And, uh, okay. Clit going to use his ulti just to get out of the way of the arrow that was never going to hit him anyway. Cloud Soul does yeah. come in. Genji locking that one down. Bit of extra movement speed after some ultimates. Never hurt anyone. And now, uh, Life's going to have ultimate safety with our Fate's calls coming through all the time. And he can throw out party casts whenever he feels like it. Afrika, five members underneath their, in their inhibitor turret on the bottom side of the map. But now Clid. Going to be able to come over here, clear out this control ward, and then he'll have full access to the enemy base. And we'll come on over to try and take down this inhibitor as well. BDD and Rascal getting to work on the bottom side, and Afrika are just getting spread too thin from the looks of things. Life looking for an opportunity to cast someone, but now Afrika, they pulled the trigger. BDD immediately going to cleanse. The Ornhorn comes down, but Rascal gonna go golden and try to avoid it. Life coming on over, looking for fly as BDD was in trouble. He looking for a shockwave target, does find one. Doesn't do too much, but still picks up the double kill. Ruler goes golden underneath the turret. Life sacrifices himself for the good of the team, and now Ruler is just going to tidy up. Ben's in trouble. Double kill for the Callista. We're looking for a full house. Ruler falls with BDD, and they will be able to find it. And Gen.G will be facing DRX in round two of the LCK playoffs, and they made it look easy. Yep, one of our swiftest three zeros that we've had, minus the pauses, we had insanely fast and dominant games today out of Gen G. That was not very close, nope. as uh, everybody did witness. And I feel like that Ocarina version of My Heart Will Go On is probably how Afrika are feeling right now. Gen G looking really strong, but I feel like they weren't really tested very much today. No. Uh, very curious to see how their match against DRX will go. I think this is the uh, assumed result of many people, uh, even after the series that Afrika took over T1. But I think the real challenge for them will come in the next couple of rounds, uh, if they even do make the finals, that is. So definitely a good look for Gen.G. Maybe this boosts, boosts, boosts their confidence. But uh, other than that, just kind of felt like maybe scrims to them very one-sided today, Atlas. Yeah, uh, it certainly felt a little bit like Scrim's gone wrong uh, here on Genji's side. And look, Genji know all about this. They suffered at the hands of this exact experience against T1 in the spring final, right? And it must be so cathartic to now sort of come in in the middle of the playoffs and be able to have a performance like this and then use that momentum to, use, to, to move forward. Waiting in the finals can be really, really hard. And uh, we've seen it, you know, Griffin uh, finishing the series in first place, Genji in spring. Uh, waiting in the finals means you don't get this stage experience. And even though they're playing at home, they're able to have these very high pressure games. And now Gen.G make this one look extraordinarily easy and they go into DRX with a lot of forward movement. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the momentum is definitely going to help them. And DRX might be biting their nails and uh, a little bit nervous after that one. Yeah. Uh, especially as they have been struggling a little bit as of late. But uh, we'll see what happens. I'm very curious for that. Of course, that will be on Sunday, Korea time, 5 p.m. when that does happen. Indeed. And uh, oh. yeah, not, not, not too much else to say about this one. It was a playoff match, but it, it did kind of feel just like another match that these two teams had in the regular season. And so, Afrika, they still have another chance. They still have another chance. They do have the regional qualifier, but we'll see how they do there as there's going to be a couple of strong teams awaiting them. Yeah, we'll have a look at some of these highlights from this game, but I think you're exactly right, Valdez. Uh, it's a bit of a problem 
Uh, Dong Chow just came over and uh, offered some condolences himself. I know a lot of you guys were Great. looking forward to uh, having some cat on the broadcast, so there you go. But this was just a bit of a sad time uh, for Afrika. But Genji definitely able to uh, carry this one through. So excited to see what they can do against DRX, who have looked up and down, right? Like, we could have a similar experience on Sunday. We actually could. We don't really know yeah, what mean, to expect from DRX. That's really the question, right? Like, wh where are they after the last week where they didn't look all too hot or fantastic in a way? Rascal gets this one. It's another morale breaker. Mystic not hiding behind the minions against Agragas. Gets flashed on. And, I mean, at least they had this engage, right? There's, this was like the one highlight from Afrika where we could actually say, hey, they're using their comp. They understand it. They have to get aggressive, get some leads here. But other than this, we, uh, we didn't really see too much. I guess Keen won the lane by a bit. So there was that. But yeah, I think Kane actually didn't have an awful day. Uh, yeah. I think the rest of the team just weren't able to really be on the same page. I think it was not really individual performances that were the big problem. I think it was uh, largely uh, the coordination just wasn't there for a freaker. It felt like they were really, really off uh, and not able to tell each other what was going on. Uh, Fly also not performing to the level that he was against T1. Fly looked like a different player uh, in that T1 series. And this yeah. looked like a disappointing fly that we sort of got used to in previous seasons. There's a nice setup there. Orn Ash can acquire targets from really far down range, especially when they don't have flash. And one, two, <laughs> and then he hands it over to BDD with a nice alley oop from the Gragas. But yeah, that they were all kind of out of control at this point. Remember, after getting this Baron, they were. 8,000 gold or so ahead, and so... Yeah. Uh, this fight's not exactly going to look very even. Nice little play by BDD to follow up on that one. And uh, this and, was when uh, the yeah. wallets were way too heavy. I was sort of expecting that it was just going to be the end. Interested to see exactly where the shockwave was utilized, because it didn't really look to me like it got too much... Oh no, we got a two-man. So it wasn't bad. Actually, uh, murdered spirit with that one, so... It's just a lot to focus on in that particular team fight. As Gen G pull it on through and manage to grab the ace and take down Afrika in this game number three, the sweep for Gen G looking good moving towards playoffs round two. Yeah, BD, insane amounts of damage. I think he'll probably pick up POG. I voted for Rascal, but uh, upon looking at the highlights, I think it could easily be contested. Yep, I think BD probably BD deserves a look life. in. Right? I think those two had some good games as well. So, we'll see. But, yeah, every gold graph kind of looked like this one. This one was a little bit more spiky because it wasn't just domination straight through 23 minutes or so. It was a little bit slower. Yeah. Um, they actually did end up getting the Cloud Soul after the Baron, I suppose. Yep. That was taken, so... I think we were in again, a replay it was, when they it wasn't actually as flashy. It. Yeah, it wasn't as flashy, but it was still, like, utter dominance like yeah, very yeah. very one-sided we are going to, to go to an interview i believe once we've got the player of the game for this series very interested um okay so we're getting some uh getting some information um but not really too much that can concern you guys just uh there were some issues that were going on here today I don't mm -hmm. think uh, too much of it was uh, on the side of the LCK, as Life is going to pick up player of the game. So at least, you know, we've shared around player of the game in amongst a whole lot of different players. But the Gragas mm -hmm. definitely was looking good, and I am, uh, I'm not upset about this choice whatsoever. Yeah, uh, you know, again, after looking at the highlights, I think he probably deserved it. It was either going to be him or BDD. And he did just have a bunch of really sick engages, awesome casts, like even this one to interrupt the Call of the Forge God. A pretty standard Gragas move, but still, you know, just very consistent, right on target. Gets there and was just a menace from the support role, so grats to Life for picking up that one. As he gets another body slam onto Mystic in that fight.
Yeah, Overall, fine. It's really fantastic play. And honestly, I mean, this was uh, when it was all over. I think the early game was definitely played very, very well. Uh, by life, though, uh, that early gank was uh, was absolutely fantastic. As six out of the nine votes will go over to him. <laughs> Only a couple over to B to D. And then the yeah, end. and for some reason Valdez voted for Rascal, but you know that's yeah, fine. it was a little bit of a yeah, maybe a little bit of a brain fade. You're entitled just, to an uh, opinion, you know. I liked uh, his engage okay. where he killed Mystic that one time, and I think that I my brain was a little bit too biased around that one, but sure. Yep. Well, here we are. Here's the interview, and so here's Jason. Thank you very much, guys. This is the beginning of a translation, and we'll be hearing from Life Ruler and Clay from Genji. I'm happy that we were able to pick up a clean 3-0 win in the playoffs round one, and we will continue to perform well in our upcoming series. Same. I'm happy that we were able to have a clean performance in this playoffs and also do, glad to have an interview as a PUG player. What about your life? Me too. I'm glad about this clean um, result and we did have some issues going on in the middle of the game, but um, I hope this does not repeat in our upcoming series. I can't see the players are fighting for the better angle, right? We need social distancing, right? But, I mean, there is no distance here. Then we can like do one by one. So let's start with Clid. Well, Genji, we're always a huge contender in the regional qualifier, but you guys were kept failing in the regular split playoffs. But this time around, you guys were able to stop the losing streak. So how did the player react after the, you guys saw the result of the wildcard series? We always thought Africa Freaks has a huge potential, and we believed that any team could make to the playoffs round one. So we focused on our own performance. And, I mean, today we kept seeing some sort of an LPL style plays because we saw a lot of kills coming out in level one. I mean, it depends on every game, but this time around, we had a lot of champions that were able to exert a lot of pressure in level 1, and that was the main reason why we kept fighting in level 1. So, game number 1, Ruler played Kaisa, and also Akali, and then we also had Evelyn in game 3, so was that a celebration for a KDS comeback? What, what was going on? I mean, Worlds is around the corner, so I think KDA champions are getting buffed. So that was why we were playing the KDA picks. What about Ari then? I think that's a very clear answer to our question. So moving on to Ruler. Your performance was on point, and your kiting, your movement was all just perfect. So how how are you feeling today? How was your condition? Very well. And the game was very exciting, so I'm pretty much satisfied with my performance. What was this? What was so exciting in today's series? In game number two. So yeah, let me ask you this question. In game two, on the bottom lane, you were kicked. Kiting ah, off yeah. against Renekton, that was a pure art. Yeah, that was so good, that was so sick. And in, the, in addition to that, the solo kill onto Zaya was also so good. I have a question about that because Zaya was also going for an auto trade, but you were utilizing the vision advantage around the wall. Was that all planned and calculated, or was that just 
What's happening? I had upgraded boots and as can outrange Zaya a little bit. So I felt that I could outrange her in this kind of situation. With those kind of sick plays and performance, you were popping off and also you are leader of almost every laning state. Part, um, laning state exactly departments. Well, compared to the spring split, I think I'm getting more praise. I'm really satisfied. And yeah, some people are really telling me that you're going to be the first team bot laner. So I think that's a reflection of my performance of the split. So I'm really happy. And then, coming in this summer split, Ruler Life duos are always known to be the best bottom duos in the in the LCK. And Rule Law is that was actually the name of the Brazilian president. So you guys are dominating the bottom lane. So who's the main carry of the bottom lane? Is that Ruler or is that Life? Well, I think actually it's split thanks to our jungler. We are always able to have a really fun game. What about your ruler? You just moved in away from the screen. Who is the leader of the bottom lane? Looking at the bottom deals. I mean, I think Ruler is the leader of the bottom view according to Life. But Life was playing on point, right? Yeah, he just keeps getting better, so I think soon he's gonna be the main character of the bottom lane. I have another question over to Life. Can you bring him? Up to the screen. <laughs> you just learned something from Ruler, right? <laughs> so this is how you live the social <laughs> life. <laughs> and today, in general, he said, well, Genji now have a very solid tier list in terms of the support role, so there won't be any special pocket pits potentially coming in. But, well, the champions that I played are OP champions, actually. <laughs> well, life being super humble, praising the ability of the champions here. And what did was actually amazed by his performance today. I mean, support Gragas depends about the pilot. So you need a lot of skill level in order to execute the champion correctly. But Life is actually putting all the credit onto the champion itself. But you are the only premier Gragas support player here in the LCK. No one actually plays Gragas support, so I can't say I'm the best Gragas support player. You guys are one step away from the Grand Finals. And your next opponent is DRX. And you guys were having a bit of a hard time up against them during the regular split. So life, what's your mindset going into that DRX series? We've lost to them a lot, so we analyzed a lot, we studied a lot, so we're gonna win this time around for sure. Played with the clap. What about you? First off, we are having good momentum. I think it's gonna be a, give a huge influence to our upcoming series, so we wanna maintain this kind of a great performance and make to the finals. <laughs> and lastly, Ruler, any message over to your fans? I mean, there are some games that could have been better and we, that we could have won. So this time around, 
We have to pay it back to our fans if improved performance and results. And this will be the end of the interview with Life Killer and Clint, the POD trios on the side of Gen Z, and it's going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jisun, for the interview translation. And uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the caster desk. There were cats absolutely everywhere. Um, that's just sort of what happens. They start <laughs> creeping in as our Valdez. Yeah. I'm glad that you weren't ganked by Yumi this time around. Um, I was today. I was just, I was double ganked. It was just pretty ridiculous. But it's good awesome. to hear from uh, three <laughs> members of uh, Gen G in that, uh, in that interview. And of course, uh, we did fawning over another support player. Uh, it wouldn't be a we did Korean broadcast without a little bit of that. Of course. I mean, uh, I'm sure he voted for life. Actually, all four I would assume casters so. did vote yeah. for life. Yeah. So that makes sense. And yeah, he did have a great series. Not even just only game three. I thought he had a uh, particularly good game two as well. And game number one was so short that <laughs> he wasn't really able to do much on the Braum. Yeah. Um, or no, no, he wasn't playing Braum. He was playing uh, Gragas once again. But either way, Definitely a good performance there as Gen.G stomp a freak. They're going to be playing DRX on Sunday, as I mentioned before. That should be a very fun matchup. I would imagine that it should be close, but Gen.G are looking good. We'll see what DRX show up with. Yeah, exactly. I'm actually not sure what to expect from DRX because, of course, their last yeah. couple of matches in the regular season, I mean, CV Max does like to experiment, right? So, uh... Moving into uh, to that match, we might see some greatness, we might see confusion, but either way, we're going to have a good time. That is, in fact, going to be yourself, Valdez, and LS on Sunday, mm -hmm. and uh, I will see you guys for the final the following Saturday. But for tonight, that will do it. We'll see you later for more LCK in a couple of days. Ah! Ah!